Good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday morning. It's 8.33. This is KHEA Radio. We're about to start our our program here today, but you're going to want to make sure you stay tuned for this one. We have a stack show. We have some fun guests. We're also going to be talking about Easter at Abundant Life. We're going to be talking uh, and announcing some winners for some giveaways that we one we announced last week and then one we did yesterday. So we're going to be giving away some Axe Masters passes over there in League City. So that's exciting. Yeah, we're going to have three winners. So if you entered in yesterday, you still have that chance to, I guess, still enter until we pick the winners. <laughs> Who so, wants it? Who's going to win? So go back to yesterday's show. Like, share, comment on that video and you have a chance to win. And then also, um, we have an old, old, old show. So you're going to have to go back a couple of weeks. But we're going to give some passes to the League City Music and uh, Barbecue Cook-Off Festival that's taking place that first weekend in May. Yeah, Texas Pit Stop's going to be there. We had talked to Arnold at the Galveston County Fair Rodeo Cook-Off. Uh, he, he did really well at the last cook-off, so it's good food. You know it's going to be a good cook-off, and I think Arnold's going to walk away with some more hardware. Oh, yeah. Wait, did you steal the trophy? I have the trophy in my backpack. <laughs> what? <laughs> Guardy. No, I'm just kidding. I got my Los Primos Cookers <laughs> koozie in here, and I wanted to use it because Los Primos, they won the whole thing. They won the whole thing, so that's Arnold's uh, Arnold's son and his his nephews. I kind of feel bad, and I don't. We didn't talk about it on the air on Friday, but I was walking around on Friday when I met Arnold's son for the first time, and I go, "Oh yeah, you're the one that your dad says can't cook." <laughs> and then they go off and win the and Grand they Master. The, they won know? the whole thing. So there's that. Apparently, they can cook, and they may be the best in Galveston County. That's um, crazy. So that's fun. I mean, I love doing that stuff. So that League City Music Festival. And the cook-off is going to be a blast. I was talking to someone the other day at church, actually, and they were telling me how they used to, you know, compete and how it's changed over the years. But I'm excited to be out there. You know, the Lions Club was in the other day talking about everything that was going on. I think we're going to be broadcasting live on location Friday of the uh, League City Music Festival and Barbecue Cook-Off. It's going to be a good time. Hey, I just want to give a shout-out to people who are tuning in right now. Chelsea says good morning. Rena says good morning. Ben says anyone going to the Crawfish Bash on the 20th? We talked about that a couple weeks ago about the big Crawfish Bash, bash taking place in Lamarck on the 20th. But we're going to be talking a different crawfish later today. Yeah, there's one going on in Galveston, and we're going to learn everything that's going on. I believe that it's taking place at what I'm going to call Skydive Galveston. So <laughs> if you haven't had the opportunity to go skydiving and you're looking for that, maybe you can go this weekend and jump out of a perfectly good airplane, ride over the ocean, land on the beach, and then go eat some crawfish. That sounds like a day that you will never forget. And Ethan, I'm willing to have you go <laughs> to have you go skydiving and eating crawfish it, this weekend. We, we can't. Does my mom have to sign something? Yes, yeah, you have to be at least 18. <laughs> like, there's a hard line. Like, I was like, oh, well, he's almost 18. But no, there's a, a hard, like, no, you can't okay, go. Okay, never mind, Ethan. I'm sorry. It's okay. I had to sign. When <laughs> I jumped out of the plane at Skydive Galveston, you have to sign a bunch of waivers. But it's completely safe. They put, uh, like, buoys on you. But it's the only place in the entire United States where you are guaranteed to land on a beach Every single time. That's true. That's true. So let's see. We got about 40 seconds, and then we're going to go on the FM as well. If you're watching on Facebook, good morning. Thank you so much for taking the time to tune in. Feel free to share this video out. Feel free to let us know what you have going on today. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, we'll go from there. Wait, Rena just asked. She said, if you win passes, say... Axe Masters, does that disqualify you from winning other prizes like no. the cruise? She's like, I don't want the axes. I just want the cruise. <laughs> the answer is no. No, we've never not. done that yet. I know some radio stations do that, but not us. We haven't we haven't decided that yet. Yeah, that that's like too much planning. <laughs> too much planning and I extra work for us. So we, we got five seconds. Here we go. Good morning. You're listening to KHEA Radio, 99.5 FM. This is Kickstart. I'm Gardy. And I'm Kurt. It's 8.37 a.m. on a Wednesday. This week is going really good so far. Speaking of it being Wednesday, that means On Air with Pierre is going to be taking place later today. So if you can't get enough Kickstart with Gardy and Kurt, then you need to make sure you go head on over to On Air with Pierre's Facebook because me and Kurt, we're going to be on there today. Yes, we're going to be on there. You can find it on his Facebook page. That's Pierre Castillo Live. We're going to be talking about tacos we're gonna be talking about a big event that's taking place called leader cast that's happening right here at our our location which is abundant life christian center which is located at 601 delaney road in lamarck texas leader cast is going to be it's going to be a lot of fun i think i'm excited because we're getting a new sound system right now in the building 
and it's a huge upgrade from the you know the 25 year old one that we had which served a great purpose but a lot of it wasn't working but leadercast is going to be fun so if you haven't had the opportunity to find out information about that just search leadercast galveston county on facebook search it just on the internet on a search engine and it's going to pop up and you'll be able to see all the speakers you'll be able to see everything that's going on i'm looking at is it on the 18th may 18th is that right no kurt that doesn't sound right it doesn't sound right <laughs> I but don't see it in the calendar. Yeah, okay. so we're going to be able to share more about that whenever we are on air with Pierre and probably actually learn some more about it. So one more time, we're going to tell you something about some giveaways. We're going to be announcing some winners today. We yeah. got Axe Masters and the Barbecue Festival. Yeah, we are uh, giving away three winners from yesterday's show. If you liked, shared, and commented on the yesterday's show, you're already entered to win. If you are just tuning in today and you're like, hey, Axe Masters, I want to go throw some axes. You can go back to yesterday's show, still like, share, and comment on that, and you will walk away with these passes. It's actually a pass for two people up to two hours. I see there's a value associated with what that costs, but we can't talk about that on the FM, but you have a chance to win those passes. Yeah, so go check them out anyways. Also, one other thing that we're giving away right now is uh, an Escape Kima experience so if you haven't had the chance to do an escape room which me and you we went and did one not too long ago yeah we went and tried the fear room at escape kima um that was last summer it seems just like yesterday but that was last summer when we went and we had a great time it, you have to solve a bunch of puzzles and they've come in studios and we've had to, to solve some puzzles as well but in order to get out of the room you have to work together as a team it's a good team building opportunity for your work maybe your co-workers maybe it's a Maybe you just want to night out with the with the friends or the ladies or the guys that you can do something like that. Are you looking for a night out with the ladies? Ladies night out? <laughs> yeah, it could it could be. I haven't had one of those in forever. Yeah, we they have those at uh, at Three Acres Food Truck Park, and we would go often. We used to. We because, just haven't done that in a while. Well, I know they got rained out. I think they're supposed to have Jeep night, but the weather has been like off and on. Which yesterday was amazing. The weather was really nice, and I think today is supposed to be more of the same. So, if you if you wanted to maybe have a ladies' night out today, Kurt, maybe you should go and check that out. That'd be fun. Yesterday, I actually went down to Galveston uh, in the afternoon and soaked up the sun. It was the first, I think, first day that we've broken over 80 all year. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like that was the first day that we broke 80. And uh, I decided, hey, go enjoy the sun. Went down uh, to the beach on the seawall down there and just kind of hang out. You skipped a rehearsal? It was like, it was the best. Like, you got these responsibilities. Let's not talk about, let's not talk about how I skipped a rehearsal. <laughs> we have for our Easter play. Uh, I had no idea. Ethan calls me at like 7.15 and he goes, hey, um, where he, are you? And I was Ethan's like. Ethan's an overachiever. Ether, he's supposed to, he's like showing up to places he's supposed to be on time and just doing what's asked and required were, of Were him. you on time? Because you didn't call me until 7.15. I was giving you some time to show up <laughs> before I started badgering you. Man, and then I, I was like, I texted Pastor, and I said, hey, I'm really, really sorry. I didn't realize there was a practice. Because, I mean, it was in the calendar, but I didn't check the calendar good enough. Wow. Oh. Sorry. Thank you for covering, though, and, and handling it, Ethan. I appreciate you. Ethan, should Kurt always check the calendar? He should triple check the calendar. Triple check it. <laughs> I like that. Even I just like single that. checking it would be good enough. I think just just something in the right direction, but you know there's always next practice, Thursday, <laughs> so that's Thursday. Tom tomorrow. I'm yes. gonna tell you right now, Kurt. There's a practice on T Thursday. I knew that practice, and we need you there. <laughs> All right, so it's gonna be a good day today. Thursday is gonna have an awesome rehearsal. I'm gonna keep y'all updated on Friday when we're we're live at Furniture Zone for our show. Yes. I'm gonna let everybody know if Kurt showed up to rehearsal on Thursday. Hey, people who are tuning in and asking, hey, practice. What are you talking about, practice? Can you kind of give us a little idea of what that practice is? Who asked that? I did. I just did. If oh. I was if I was listening, I'd be like, practice? What practice? Yeah. So, again, it's uh, Easter play. So, we're having rehearsals for the Easter play, and it's, it's going on right now. Yeah. So, the Easter play is called Road to Emmaus, uh, Angela's Story. It's taking place the weekend of uh, Easter. It's Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday night <laughs> at 7 o'clock. Russ. <laughs> Russ. Russ helped you out there. There you go. Thank practice you, Russ. Practice for... Uh, You're welcome. It's taking place on Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday night here at Abundant Life Christian Center. It's free to attend, and it's basically the story of Jesus and his life. That's correct. It's 842. This is KHEARadio.com, 99.5 FM. It's Kickstart. We're going to be on until 11. We're going to have Hippie Fertilizer in studio 
later this morning, and I'm excited because call me call me old fashioned. I love having the greenest grass on the block. Right now, I do <laughs> not have the greenest grass on my street, and it's killing me. It's killing me. It's actually a house that's like two or three doors down, and I asked my wife, would it be weird if I go knock on their door and be like, what in the world do you do? Is this spray paint? How do you get your grass this green? It's not fair. Is is that the house that everybody wants? Like, that's the yard. Like, as you're driving around, and you're like, they're the best yard in the neighborhood. No, I don't think so. I, do a lot of people think that way? Because you don't think that way. I, I, I remember as a young kid thinking that way. Oh, okay. You saw the greenest grass. And I was like, oh, I want their grass. I love green grass. Like, if your grass is the best. Here's the thing. This is the first time I've ever heard you talk about it this way. Usually you're like, Gardy, you're dumb. You know, green grass yeah, is silly. For you. <laughs> for you because you talk about it literally all the time. And for me, I don't have green grass. But now, you know, I'm looking at houses. Oh, that's what it is. Right? Okay, like, I'm okay. getting excited about having my own house. We went and looked at a house on Monday. You and I did. And it had the biggest yard that I've ever seen. Biggest yard. The house on the inside, maybe not. But the yard was huge. And it had really, really green grass. And it had awesome trees. I feel like Hippie Fertilizer doesn't want me to have this house because it's already perfect. I wouldn't need him. I mean, you can always take it up to the next, next level. Next level, right. You know, that, that house that you went and looked at had pretty decent landscaping, some nice trees, some green grass. But it can always be better. That's the thing about, you know, taking care of what you have. Whether that's your house, your yard, you can always keep it up. It's it's a struggle. Like every day is a journey, and then you can also upgrade all the time. Upgrade all the time. I feel like also the the nice thing about that house that we looked at was the the flower beds. You know, I think like it's not just about the grass; it's about the accessories, the that landscaping. You have. Yeah, the accessories. Yeah, <laughs> accessories. <laughs> Accessorize that lawn. The plants <laughs> are, are accessories now. So. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm excited for us to go check out another house for you. I think that we're going to, uh, we'll get you in a house by the end of the 20, century mark. 22. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think about the within next the year. next 100 years or so, we'll make sure that we get you inside of a house. <laughs> maybe so even one day. <laughs> maybe even local. I don't know. We'll see. Right now it's 845. This is KHEA. Good morning. Hey, folks. What's up, Kim? Uh, Steve, Leanne, Curb Appeal. That's how she named it. I think I think Leanne lives in my neighborhood because I've seen her in my neighborhood group before. So I want is that your house with the really green grass? And what's the secret? Hippie fertilizer says it's hippie juice, but I I am not 100 percent sure that's what it is. I okay. Is it bad whenever I see guys working on that that house, like the yard dudes, I'm I'm just watching them. I'm scoping them out, trying to see what are they doing. Okay, so what's this, the secret? This, is it hippie juice? You know? This is where I, I I get concerned for you, Guardy. When you say things like I like sitting and watching people work on their yard, that's where I get concerned. And that's I'm learning where- tips. <laughs> I do it with YouTube too. You do as well. You know, if there's something you don't know how to do, you go find somebody who's an expert at it and be like, teach me. I'm, I'm like on Google, on YouTube, like how do I do this with, you know, with this gear? How do I do that? How do I get my grass to be the greenest? You know, and so far it's just like spray paint. So I don't know. So you use some of hippie fertilizing I, stuff. I right? did. Yeah. You know what? They helped me out. Uh, he said, Hey, use this on your grass. And I did. And my grass started growing like wildfire started like growing like weeds just growing up, but it's grass, you know, so it's good. It's really bright. It's green and it's still a little patchy. So I'm waiting for it to come in in other places. But I had it mowed yesterday, so it's nice and even, and it's looking really good so far. So I need to get some more advice from Hippie Fertilizing, so that way I can keep going in the right direction. Yeah, and he uses all natural products, so we're going to be talking about that with him at, at 9 o'clock. One, yes, one thing that I learned from him whenever he came in was that weeds aren't necessarily bad. Like, why would I want this flower gone? You know, he said, hey, if it's gone, you know, just mow it. And if you mow it, it also like all those nutrients and stuff kind of just go back into the grass and it, it helps feed the grass. So I don't know. That was a different way of looking at stuff. Yeah. Are, are you someone who mows their own yard? Me? No, no I don't. You pay somebody. Yes. So for me, when I was looking at that yard, I got really excited because I haven't mowed a yard since I was like 18. You say that now, but yeah. You had mowed a yard since you're 18, Kurt. I'm telling you, if you're mowing the yard every week in the summertime, you're going to be crying like a baby. Oh, I didn't even think about the Texas <laughs> weather. See, Nebraska and Vermont, it's perfect because it never gets like super hot. You know, it's great. It's fantastic. It's fun. And, like it's a an afternoon activity to go and mow the yard. You know, but yeah. I feel like I had a better body when I was 18, and so like 
walking around and, and walking up hills and mowing was a lot easier because I was in better shape. So I don't think 30... What was the shape? Uh, I've off. seen your high school photos. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. But are you going to be the guy out there in the summer, you know, it gets hot, you take off your shirt and you're just like, I'm just powering through. A man's man, right? Mowing the grass. Kurt Casper. That's also why I need a better body. <laughs> I need my old body back. <laughs> Specifically for mowing the grass in the summer at your new house. Right. <laughs> hey, you know what? You, you know what you need? You need yeah. one of those, uh, like a dream board or... You know how people do that? <laughs> They're like, here's my vision board, and you got you mowing the <laughs> mowing the grass on the house, like in shape, jacked. Right. That's that's some good Looking goals. like Booker T. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Steve says uh, round is a shape. <laughs> it is a shape. It is. <laughs> to say you were in shape, you were a shape. <laughs> yeah. It's 848. It's KHEA Radio, 99.5 FM. It's Kickstart. So we're going to be talking about crawfish later as well as long uh, as well. Uh, along with hippie fertilizing. So we're going to be splitting those up. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're giving away some Axe Master passes, so you can go throw some axes. We're also going to be giving away some passes either Friday or Saturday at the League City Music and Barbecue Festival. It's Friday, Saturday, right? Because Uh, it's not Sunday. Right. We do also have some weekend passes that we will be giving away in the coming weeks as we lead up. Probably that week we're going to drop those weekend passes because that's Friday and Saturday. Yeah. Hey, I see a bunch of people tuning in. Feel free to to keep sharing and and letting letting us know what you have going on today. Good morning, Colleen Merritt with the city of Lamarck. Uh, yesterday, we dropped a video where we were kind of cruising through the city of Lamarck, trying to find our next Shine on Lamarck video. You know, I'm so glad that that house that we went and looked at for that video was in Lamarck. It just made the whole video kind of about the city, which is awesome. Yeah, and we I think we found the next place. So I don't want to announce it quite yet but it was in the video so if you hadn't seen that little vlog style video that we released the the next shine on lamarck is going to be dropping on monday and the place is in there so we'll see oh yeah it is in there so yeah go check out that video it is on our facebook page at khea hey and then a and a machine and fabrication that drops on i-45 now yeah a and a uh i we need to reach out to alan and make sure that we can get him scheduled in because i want him back i miss alan we saw him for four days in a row <laughs> and we haven't seen him since unplanned and now he's just out there he's gone hollywood you know he worked he's worked hard his entire life a and a released on i-45 now and now he's probably on vacation living the good life flying drones i haven't even i haven't even seen him I miss him. I do too. We went to Texas Pit Stop <laughs> yesterday trying to find him because we did run into him there before, but you know he wasn't there. So we need to stop eating at Texas Pit Stop barbecue. We eat there all the time. Why would you even say that? We don't need to stop. <laughs> don't stop. Don't stop. That's the that's the silliest thing. You know, you've said some really crazy things in your life. That may be the craziest thing that has come out of your mouth today. Right. So far. So far. So it's going to change. <laughs> we still got some time, and then we're going on air with Pierre later. So. There is also the possibility of even even more good stuff coming out. Um, yeah. Again, let us know. Good morning, Kath- Catherine. Good morning, uh, Josue. Shout out to Tetelestai. And then Steve Dean, also with Cupcake Cache. They're one of our partners over there at Leak City off Marina Bay Drive. I've been watching their social media, and I haven't been there in, in a couple days, so I need to get back over there. I love taking my family to Cupcake Cache because they have – so many like Easter themed cupcakes right now. It depends on what there's seasonal stuff. So that's what I love about about their establishment. There's a lot of seasonal stuff. So whenever there's a holiday or a celebration coming up, they always like push out some really cool stuff for it. Cupcakes. What are they putting peeps on the cupcakes for Easter? I haven't seen any in the pictures yet, but that may be an option. Do you like peeps? Um I used to tear through peeps when I was younger. I don't think I've teared through peeps <laughs> as an adult. Peeps are good. I, I don't like them. I used to get... You don't like them? Why? Because I'd rather have Cadbury eggs. I'd rather have, like, the solid milk chocolate bun. You don't like Cadbury eggs. I've never had Cadbury oh. eggs. What are Cadbury eggs? Okay, so it's it comes in foil, like most chocolate. So it's a chocolate egg, and they have, like, some kind of oozy, delicious awesomeness inside. Oh, it's like caramel and stuff. Well, I'm sure they make caramel ones, but the original Cadbury egg, it was, like, white. I don't think it was caramel, but caramel is good. I think they make like a version of that, right? Ethan, I don't Maybe think that the Cadbury would. Some. It had like some kind of white stuff, but hey, Kurt, somebody ne- needs to get this guy a Cadbury egg. This somebody may be a trick. It. This may somebody be a trick. Bring, I, well, I didn't eat breakfast this morning. Yes, what? you did. I saw you eat <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> did you forget? 
Oh yeah, I did. <laughs> Ethan just pulled the. Can you hand that to me, Ethan? He just pulled the evidence off the Why trash can. Why are you kid. pulling things out of the trash? You had some Golden Graham s'mores treats. Okay, can I talk about this Golden Graham's treat for just two seconds? I would love to. I love it because I have it every morning. It's s'mores. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> um, so on the when you peel open the 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 bar, right? Like it has the milk on the bottom and it has the stuff on top. The wrapper always sticks to the bar. It's not real milk, Kurt. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's just stickiness. They slap it on the bottom. Yeah, it's it sticks, and I don't want it to stick. <laughs> Sometimes the topics that we get on is so funny. Well, oh, did Steve posted the the taco thing? Have you seen the cupcake cache taco? Cupcakes? You know, I almost had one. So. You let those go bad. Kurt like ate, either ate them all himself. Anytime anybody ever gives anything to Kurt and they're like, hey, can you give one to Guardy? The answer is is no, he won't. And so there were some cupcakes that they, Cupcake Cachet gave to Kurt and they were like, hey, these are for you and Guardy. And they were taco themed, but I didn't get one. I did not get one. Dang, don't tell Steve. I, I just Steve's did. Steve's listening right now. I know. So no, I need to go get some more uh, so I can try one. I would love to be able to try those taco cupcakes. Sounds like it would be delicious tastes like tacos yeah so we're dropping a video by the way later on today for benito's international um and it's going to be for our talk of taco group if you haven't heard of talk of taco we have a group all you search is talk of taco and whenever you eat a taco you can actually post it in the group or taco memes or yeah. anything we're on the hunt for the world's greatest taco and we want help i almost went and got breakfast tacos this morning but i decided not to I actually, I you turned around. It was it was really weird. I wanted to make sure I was on time. Something inside, like literally, and I would have still been on time, I think. But something inside of me was like, I need to make sure I'm there. And I still don't know why, because I could have been late. I, Ethan was the next person to show up, and uh, but Scott let him in. So I really don't, I don't know. Like I don't know why I needed to be here. Be here. But it, you, you ever get that feeling where it's just like, hey, this is the wrong decision. Yeah. I feel that a lot. And with tacos, that's usually never the case. That's the first time I've ever felt that with tacos. So I wonder if it was maybe I could have got a speeding ticket or there's just something. And you get that feeling. Yeah. And so I just like, I literally, you turned around and and I came back to the church here to KHEA radio. It was weird. You hear those stories all the time of situations where you get those feelings and it's either like a gut feeling or something, but it's usually like God guiding you in a certain situation yeah it could be or it could could have been i had mexican food last night and he was telling me like hey you don't need any more you know i don't i don't know or maybe the taco would have been super expensive it could have been that could have been could have got food poisoning i don't know it's 856 it's dot com 99.5 fm thank you for watching us on facebook thank you for sharing this out on facebook thank you for also listening on 99.5 fm feel free to call and text a friend tell them to Turn the radio, 99.5. You can also stream us from anywhere in the world at khearadio.com. So if you have some friends and family that are living on the other side of the of the world, you can actually text them, call them, tell them, hey, tune in to this website. You can listen to their stream from anywhere. Yeah, it's it's really kind of cool. I actually have 99.5 stored in my phone. It's channel 6. I know it's just channel wow. 6. It's not channel 1 yet. <laughs> but uh, all we ask is that you put 99.5 FM on your program. We don't care what number it is because I've told people before, if we're number six now, just give us a few days and you will be number one in your heart. And that's all that matters. That's true. This is KHEA Radio.com, 99.5 FM. Coming up next is Need to Breathe, Hard Love. Stay tuned. This is Kickstart. We're going to be on till 11 a.m. Sweet. Okay. What's up, Facebook? So we need to text Hippie. Is that how you have him saved in your phone, just hippie? No. Actually, <laughs> oh, let's see. I don't think I have his number saved. Hippie. Arthur. Hey, so Steve said, and he had some Korean barbecue tacos at Barge 294 last night. It was awesome. This sounds delicious. And then, wait, did you have breakfast tacos again at Lo Bonita, India? Man, I've heard some really good things. That's in League City. And you know who else has told us about that? Uh, Mike Mystery. One of the owners, him and his brother, they own Burger Nation. They have said really good things about that. That's pretty close. I believe to Dr. Choppa's office and Butler's Courtyard. Man, I need to go check it out. I said something to Dr. Choppa yesterday, which if you missed Dr. Choppa's show, you need to go back and watch it. 
it was uh, it was a lot of fun and it was very um, informative of you know health and wellness and all that. But I said, Doctor Chapo, I feel like you're surrounded by Mexican restaurants, and that's one of them. What are the other Mex? I'm trying to think of that area. I only know the Cantina, which is down the road. Yeah, the Lobun. It's he's surrounded by the Cantina, and then La Bonita India right there. And if you go a little bit further, there's like uh, there's a burrito place. So there's a lot of delicious Mexican food in our area, and <laughs> that and that area is no different. So. Ethan, with those sunglasses on, you look like you're about to star in an 80s- What are you doing? <laughs> in like an 80s comedy movie or something. My life is an 80s comedy movie. Thank you very much. <laughs> Who does he look like? He looks like, there's an a, there's straight up an actor that he looks like right now. Is it one of the kids in Weird Science? Possibly. Oh, you know the kid in um, the Breakfast Club. Breakfast Club, yeah, that's what he looks like. You do. Can, can we get a shot of that, Ethan? Can you actually come in- I want to. I want to make sure. Say I look like the kid from the Sandlot. Well, yeah, no, you do when you bring, usually. But you today. wear that hat. You wear like the hat, and you're killing me, Smalls. So we're gonna get this shot. Ethan, have a seat for a sec. Does he look like he's about to star in one of the greatest '80s movies oh. of all time right now? Breakfast Club. <laughs> the Breakfast Club. You do. You know which kid we're talking about, right? Have you ever seen Breakfast Club? I have yet to see. The Breakfast Club. Well, now that we have oh a celebrity in here, I feel like I'm getting a little nervous. Anthony. Anthony Michael Hall. Anthony Michael Hall. <laughs> Can I hey, see a picture of him? Yeah, Anthony I'm gonna Michael I'm Hall? gonna Google him for you. I wanna I wanna make sure that what y'all are saying is uh, flattering. Is accurate? Yeah. What if we? <laughs> what if it's not? Well, I I pulled him up and it's like pictures of him that are like current day. But look at the uh, young version. Uh, I see it. I see it. I just so that's grow what, my hair out a little bit. That's what bit. you're gonna look like whenever you're an old man one day. So I, there's that. I think I'm fine with that. Oh, I, I'm actually showing the camera. <laughs> oh, a comparison. Hey, there you go. Side by side. Side by side. <laughs> there we go. He's got a picture. Of, Ethan, look. What? With the sunglasses. Yeah, that's the yeah. one I found. Okay, so here's the thing. Side by side it. Yes, that is exactly him, isn't it? Ethan found his doppelganger. Remember when that was on Facebook? Were you on Facebook when that was a thing? It was like, oh, post a picture of your doppelganger, and it's like a celebrity. Oh, I was. I was. Who was your doppelganger? I don't remember. I, I look like Arnold Cruz. Who's Arnold Cruz? Like Tom Cruise's lost mm -hmm. brother? Is that something you made up, or yes. does he have a really? Bad? I don't know who I look like. I have no idea. When we went to the um, <laughs> Arnold, Arnold Cruz. Cruz. <laughs> wow. When we went to the Children's Oasis banquet, I had a Hawaiian shirt on, and somebody told me I looked like. Uh, what's that kid's name from Saved by the Bell? Um, Zach Morris. Zach Morris. You needed the big cell phone yeah. with the long extension antenna on there, and you're like, hey, what's up? Like the brick phone. I feel like I just look like any blonde child star. That's, ba that's fair. Basically. With, those gl with the glasses, you look like Anthony Michael Morris or whatever his name oh, yeah. was. I don't know. And now I look like intern Ethan. Ethan. Yeah. He's back. Man, it's crazy how, how glasses can change you. Hippie mm -hmm. fertilizing is on their way. Boom! We're going to be talking about some grass, because nobody knows grass like, like Hippie. Mr. Hippie Fertilizer. Hey, do you want to talk about the event that's happening on Saturday as well? Sure. Okay, so we're we're going to actually be on air at 3 o'clock. Did you guys want to jump on really fast? Sure. Tracy, do you want to come on over here um, so that we, we can talk a little bit about... Because there's a, a big event that's happening. It's 24 hours on... Um, this one right here on is Saturday. Perfect. It's 24 hours? 24 hours. 24 hours of Fun. of like raising raising funds, right? Yes. And what is that going to go towards? Actually, it's for an organization called Snowdrop Foundation, and we have a campaign going called Delivering Hope. Okay. And what Kevin Klein is doing is he's going to Alaska in the middle of winter, and he's going to run 300 miles on the Dalton Highway, which is the road that the Ice Truckers is filmed on. Wow. Yeah. That's a long, long. First, of all, it's a, it's a, it's a long distance, and then it's far away from here. Yes. So what gave him that idea? He he just Googled the craziest thing to do, and that popped up. Um, so I think the I think his wife, Trish, nixed the first idea, so he had to go to the second idea. What was what it? Was, do you know? Tell us. I think Brian may know, but uh, oh my Brian's goodness. his crew chief. We'll have him come over here in just a second. But, yeah, um, everybody said, no, no, you can't do it. You're not doing it. No. And so he's doing it. So, yeah. Well, that seems like it's a great, it's a great idea. And yeah. so that's going to be this Saturday? It is. We're having, yes. It's called Delivery Hope. And uh, but along with the 24-hour telethon, we're going to have something called Dread Mail Till You Snowdrop, 
and it's going to be eight teams of 10 people running for 24 hours on a treadmill raising money for pediatric cancer. That's a great cause. Yeah. We have two spots left if either of you want to you know, run. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No. I can get Kurt to run. Yeah. I can't do 24 hours running. Just put your shorts on shoes when you come to be on air. Yeah. So is it on a treadmill? There's t- there's eight of them. Yep. They're going to all be Okay, running. Kurt. I have an idea. Here's what we'll do. <coughs> I like this. I, I, I don't like this idea already. We'll lay you down on the treadmill and you just roll. I feel like you could roll 24 hours. Just like <laughs> just going side over side over side over side, and that would be a great. It's for a great cause. I'd pay money not to have to do it. Oh, that, we'll like I would it. donate we'll money not to have to. We have an eight hundred number. We'll give you. I don't have. I have much, but I'll give whatever I can. So if somebody wants to tune in and watch, where can they they find it? They can go to Delivering Hope page on Facebook. Okay, um, and it's going to be there starting at noon Saturday. And can, we've, we've got guests coming, so hopefully we'll be entertaining. Awesome. Can you share how this? I guess Delivering Hope, how it started, and the whole foundation as yes, well. Yes, No Drop started. Kevin and Trish Klein, uh, Kevin's the morning DJ on 93Q, and he the radio station went to do their telethon at Texas Children's Hospital. And he saw this young lady you know, playing and coloring with some of the kids, and he goes, it is so nice for you to volunteer. She said, I'm not a volunteer. I'm a cancer patient. Mm-hmm. Her name was Chelsea Campbell, and um, they became good friends. They became family. And for her 16th birthday, Chelsea wasn't supposed to survive, but she did her 16th birthday, and Kevin and Trish gave her the Snowdrop Foundation wow. as a birthday gift. And since that, since her birthday that year, they've raised over $2 million for pediatric cancer for Texas Children's Cancer Center. Um, Chelsea passed away a few months after her birthday, but she, she did get the foundation, and her parents and her sisters are actively involved. Her sister, Tori's become a nurse. She's going to come start our race off for us Saturday, um, just very involved, and um, so pediatric cancer awareness and for scholarships. We gave away over $200,000 last year for pediatric cancer scholarships. What does the name Snowdrop mean? Here's where I get confused. It was one of Chelsea's uh, favorite flowers, and it's the most hardy. comes out first in the winter, and it's one of the hardiest flowers. What does it look like? Um, let's see. Do we have? It's white, and it goes like this and that. How's that? Yeah. I'm going to pull up a picture Yeah. because I had no idea it was a flower. Yes, it is. That's cool. Talk about how cool that is, though, that she... Her kind of her memory. Um, one of the one of the things that we always know is that Chelsea's at every event um, in spirit, and just to have a you know she went to Santa Fe High School. Um, her soccer coach, um, Susan, still does a five k run for her. Um, the volleyball coach does something called rally ra- rally around the cause, um, and so just to know the impact she had in her short life, there's no way in the world we want to not honor the life that she gave to others. Tracy, why did you get involved in this? Um, my best friend and her husband dragged me into it. No. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm an educator, and so my life is kids, and my, and my that's just my, my mission and vision in life is, is with kids. And um, once you're a part of it, you'll see Saturday, once you're around the people that are in Snowdrop, um, it's just infectious. It's just contagious. And, what, you know, and I always tell people, I can, so I'm going to. And this is something I can do is raise funds for pediatric cancer, so I'm going to. What led you into education? Um, let's see. I wanted to be a coach, and I ended up being a science teacher. Um, and just um, have always had a passion for kids. I wouldn't want to do anything else. Did you work with Susan? No. I do now when she does the race. And when she cooks cookies, we make sure we go over that way and eat the cookies she makes for Snowdrop. Um, but no, I didn't work with her. Oh. We like Susan's cookies. She's came in before. Yes, we've got some Saturday. We're giving away. So, all right. Yeah, we've got we've got all kinds of cakes. We're having an old fashioned cake walk. We're having a sweets auction. So we're having donuts. We're having all kinds of things that we're that we're auctioning off food wise because people like to eat. And it's all on Facebook. It's all on Facebook. We've um, never done it. It's a big thing. Where um, where are you guys doing it at? We're going to be at Peak Performance Warehouse in Friendswood. It's off of five twenty eight. Um, the owners. We actually had to, two weeks ago, we've been planning this event for a year, we had to change locations. So uh, Amy and Ashley Miller from Peak Performance Warehouse thankfully stepped up and said, you can come use our gym. Um, so w- that's where we're going to be having. They came on our show they did. not too long ago. Awesome. Yes. But we are so thankful for them. Uh, they're going to be running, actually. They've already, in, in two days, they put a team together of folks in their gym. So they're going to have a team, um, and they've just been so welcome. So with the team, it would be people that switch off. Yes. So, hey, we're going to run the entire time, right? you know, and have, for the entire 24 hours. 24 hours. They run either one hour. They have to run one hour minimum, and then they have to get off 
and let somebody else on. So it's um, it's so, consistent though. Yeah, so you can't do the whole twenty four hours. Everybody has to suffer. We want everybody to suffer equally. So yes. Everybody has to do. Yeah. Wow. And so how much how much money is the goal to raise on Saturday? Is there a goal? Uh, um, no. I'm just gonna let the Lord set the goal and go from there. We know we want to make. We're, we're trying to raise two hundred thousand dollars in a year, so we're gonna try to do it in small elephant bites. So is this hope. the first? Big fundraiser um, for we've this had year. A, we've had a couple other ones. We had one, and it was an awesome one at, at a Lamborghini place downtown. Mm-hmm. So that was cool. But this will probably be the biggest one that we have for um, Delivering Hope. So we'll see what happens. I saw that Lamborghini that you got <laughs> yeah. in the front as you yeah. came in. Not on my educator salary. <laughs> <laughs> It would be nice to have a Lambo. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So one of the things that Guardy and I talked about yesterday, we're like, do we have to suit up for this? Like, is this is that this kind of thing? No. I'm wearing a tux. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's decided. Uh, Kevin Kahn will probably be wearing a paisley shirt, a fedora. Who knows what he's going to be wearing? He has. So he has some issues with clothing. I guess. You know. Can we get an exact like wardrobe of his so we can wear the exact yes. same thing? Yes. That'd be really cool. We will send you some pictures, Brian. <laughs> oh, some. please. Yeah. You know, I, there's a. A weatherman that I started following on Instagram. He's out of California, and I actually saw I follow a World Star on Instagram. <laughs> but they posted him doing like one of these dance things. He's a weather guy. I like. Fox. Oh yes, I saw that. Yeah, and so he does these things. But I was looking at some of his yeah. pictures, and and he takes these photos of like basketball players, celebrities dressed like in their whole outfits, and he copies them and does the exact same pose, and it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. It just reminded me of that when you were talking about his his clothing and stuff, and. And I would like to do that. I would like to copy Kevin Klein. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll yeah, do it. Uh, we're gonna have some live entertainment. I know Brian's band is. He's in a band. He's gonna come. We have um, somebody called uh, Duck Ella Ice is gonna come and do a rap. Cool. What's the name? Duck Ella Ice. My last name's Duck, so I thought that sounded cool. <laughs> since, since, since I'll be doing the the rap. So oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Are you the rapper? I am. Oh, no, I am gonna act. I'm gonna have a shirt that's act like I'm a rapper. Oh. But yes, okay. I am. I am doing a rap to Ice Ice Baby, and I rewrote the lyrics for uh, pediatric cancer. So we'll see. I have some injuries from falling in, into my fireplace and into furniture as I've been practicing. But oh wow. Yeah, we'll see. And I see Brian laughing over there like, oh, <laughs> why don't you come over here, Brian? Brian, <laughs> Brian, Brian Anderson is the crew chief for Delivering Hope, so he's the one that's going to make sure Kevin doesn't die um, on mm-hmm. the road. And we're going to be back in the warm hotel um, you know, doing some social media things. So, Brian, why don't you come chat for a second? Yeah, well, running 300 miles mm-hmm. in sub-freezing yes. temperatures sub. is no joke. No. Next it, no. Door the right. yeah, y'all can... Sure. You can actually it out. stay right there, yeah. That's so, cool. yeah, that's not it's not the easiest thing uh, to do. So, I mean, how do you train for that? Well, yeah, it's it, when when Kevin comes up with these ridiculous ideas, my job's to figure out how we pull it off. And um, so I've been crewing Kevin for about five years. When he came up with this idea, we did nix a couple of them that were just ridiculously stupid. Um, but to train, when, when we run this race, the average temperature will be somewhere between minus 10 and minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, we started the Arctic Circle and head north. And so to train for this, we've actually installed a uh, walk-in freezer in his garage that we can crank down to minus 15 to minus 20, and he gets in there on a treadmill and runs several hours a day. Wow. So after this race is done, is he going to be able to use his garage as like a big walk-in freezer yeah. <laughs> if he wants to? People are already asking him to come hang meat in there. but <laughs> <laughs> It's like a meat locker. No, we'll, uh, we, we'll, uh, we'll uh, un- uninstall it and give it. It was actually donated. It was donated to us. Um, you know, that's the cool thing about this organization is people get involved in it. It's, it's you know, we're fighting pediatric cancer. It's a great cause, and we we have been fortunate to be able to find people to donate things like a walk-in freezer mm-hmm. that allow us to go in. Uh, and do the training because there's no way to train for those kind of temperatures here in Houston, obviously. Yes. Don't we have some of the best cancer research and centers in the world Texas here? Texas Children's is one of the best on the planet. And, um, you know, when when, he, when we got involved in this, uh, it became very evident um, uh, that Texas Children is just uh, head and shoulders above the rest of the world. And, and, and it, we're very fortunate here in the Houston area to be able to have Texas Children's around. How and why did you get involved? Kevin and I met, my brother's a country artist, and Kevin's, uh, uh, we, uh, we met on an in-studio uh, when my brother was in studio. Kevin and I hit it off, and we've been good friends since 2005. He started the organization in 06, and, and we just, you know, it was a great organization, and uh, it, it resonated with us. Actually, my wife and I, uh, one of our nephews was born with pediatric cancer mm-hmm. um, and fought it for the first five, five years of his life. Uh, he's, he's in remission now and doing fantastic, uh, but, you know, it hit home with us. Uh, and we've been involved very heavily in it since the beginning of the foundation. Wow. Can you share a little bit about uh, your brother's band? Uh, didn't you say you're a musician as well? I, 
I, yeah, I, I've played all my life. Uh, I led praise and worship in churches for about 30 years. Haven't done it for a while now. Uh, my brother, though, is a professional musician in Nashville. His name's Keith Anderson, and uh, he's written a couple of uh, top 10 hits. Um, and uh, he's doing well. He uh, he travels around a lot. But, uh, lives That's in cool. Nashville. Yeah. Yeah. That's a different. It's a different lifestyle. It is <laughs> uh, not one I would want. <laughs> I, I, we do it for fun, my son and I. That's cool. What kind of is it? Country music as well? No, we do uh, we do acoustic rock. I like it. Guardy's a musician too, so okay. anytime you, you know what you should do. This just popped in my head. You should have the people also like playing a guitar as they're walking on the treadmill. <laughs> I mean, just 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 add to it, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Make it as entertaining. It's a great idea. I'm gonna have to do that, ain't yeah. I? Yeah. Whenever you're running with the guitar and you fall, or and ukulele, would be even better. Oh. Go viral. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. So, you know Kevin really, really well. What yes. should we expect for questions when he's talking to us? Kevin, like, get us ready for you, this. Well, you got to be. You got to realize Kevin talks for a living. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's he's that's what he's done his entire life. So you, you, he will be prepared and expect just anything from Kevin. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. Uh, we're going to be on air with Pierre, and that'll be some, Practice. I guess, prep. I found whenever me and Kurt are on the other side and getting interviewed and asked questions, sometimes Kurt likes to hear himself talk. And the first couple times... Like, radio, you know, radio people send him... It's weird. It's kind of odd. Yeah. yeah. And like... What? Kurt was like, that interview went great. I was like, yeah, you did a good job. You know, like, I was just kind of chilling there. And you're like, oh. <laughs> he went back and watched. He was like, you didn't really say much. And I was like, you didn't well, let me. Gardy, yeah. if, if, if you want, you know, it could be kickstart hand. with Kurt and Gardy. Just do you know, Kurt. Just flip yeah. it. Just flip it so that my name's first and your name is second. I'll Just just leave me out. So Kurt's I'll... one of those guys, once he starts talking, he never breathes, right? It's, it's just. I stop. <laughs> <laughs> I think we both can be that way. This morning, I was like, Kirk, can we just get like a moment of silence? And I had to count to 10. <laughs> I had to count to 10. And then he it was, was like, one, two. And nine was like, I was like, I don't want this moment to end. I don't want this moment to end. So if somebody wants to donate for the event, like even today, you can are go, they able to? You can go to del- deliveringhoperun.org. It's all, all run together there. There's a place there you can donate. You can go to snowdropfoundation.org. Uh, you can go to either one of the Facebook sites because there's a Delivering Run, the Delivering Hope Run uh, Facebook site, as well as the the uh, Snowdrop. And I'll I'll go ahead and give you the 800 number here that we're going to be using this weekend, one eight hundred five six seven nine four five seven. And we'll be the entire 24 hours. We'll be taking calls. We'll be putting people on the the live stream, uh, and we'll be taking donations there. Uh, so, you know, as, as Tracy said, we're, we're our goal for the Delivering Hope is to uh, to raise two hundred thousand dollars for pediatric cancer research. Uh, we we fund a doctor at Texas Children's. About half of the funds that te- that Snowdrop raises goes towards his research. The other half goes towards uh, scholarships for pediatric cancer survivors and and current patients. All right. So let's see. We got twenty seconds, and I think we're going to go on the FM um, right now, and then we can we can talk some more. So that way, some more people will be able to hear about sure. the event as well. So <clears throat> here we go. Yeah, let us know. Hey, have you heard of this event? Feel free to share this stream out if you're watching on Facebook. Here we go. Good morning. You're listening to KHEA Radio 99.5 FM. This is Kickstart. I'm Guardy. And I'm Kurt. We're talking about a cool event that's taking place this weekend. It's raising money. It's raising funds for pediatric cancer. It's going to be in Friendswood. You'll be able to watch it live on Facebook or listen you know, on, on the internet as well. Can you introduce yourself and the name of the event that's taking place? I'm Brian Anderson, um, and the event, that, it's actually two events simultaneously. We've got uh, treadmill or Dreadmill to you Snowdrop, where we've got uh, seven or eight teams on treadmills for 24 hours uh, running. Uh, and we've also are going to do a 24-hour Facebook live stream on the Snowdrop Foundation Facebook page where we'll be trying to raise money for pediatric cancer research. Uh, this is all in conjunction with a run that we've got later in the year for Snowdrop called Delivering Hope, where Kevin Klein is going to jump out at the Arctic Circle and run 300 miles north to Dead Horse, Alaska on the Dalton Highway, which is one of the coldest and most dangerous uh, highways in the nation. What kind of temperatures can we expect? Uh, it, it ranges anywhere from minus 15 to minus, it's hit minus 80 before. They said it averages about minus 20 in the, the time that we're going to be there. So he's going to be running 300 miles in about negative 20 degrees. Correct. Okay. So I will say this. I've done cryotherapy one time. It was three minutes at about negative 30 degrees. And I never realized a minute was so long until I was in that yeah. chamber and I 
like the first 10 seconds, I was like, did I make a mistake getting in here? So I can't imagine. It's just interesting. Running. We were there in December. We went and did a scout trip. And while we were there, uh, the temperatures ran. He got out and ran uh, the first 10 miles of what we're going to run, and it was minus 13. And it actually wasn't horribly, I mean, it was cold, but it's a dry cold. It's very desert like. We came back into Fairbanks, and it was minus 20 degrees, and we got out of the car to eat, and it was really cold. But when we came back out of the restaurant, took a deep breath, and everything inside my nose froze, and we looked up at the sign next to it, and it was minus 27. Yeah. So minus 27 is really cold. That's yeah, no joke. I mean, it can get dangerous, can it? It can. And that's part of, we do have a crew. I'm the crew chief. One of my jobs is to keep Kevin alive. Um, we, we have a group of people. We have an Army medic that's coming with us. Uh, so we'll we'll be watching Kevin very closely as he's running, but he is going to try to run somewhere in the neighborhood of 37 miles a day, uh, out in this out in these temperatures. And part of what we got to do is make sure that he doesn't chill, doesn't. So we'll be changing clothing occasionally because, believe it or not, when you have to bundle up to protect against the cold, you sweat on the inside. You start and yeah, you know, at any point you can start chilling, and and that's when the day's over. So we got to be real careful. Yeah, I saw uh, actually Todd Wim said good morning, sir. That's one of my. Uh, my former teachers and, and football coaches, and I remember being here in Lamarck playing football, and it was, I don't know, like 40 degrees, and we were like 50 degrees, yeah. probably not even that cold, and we're just like, oh, it's so freezing just, yeah. be, just being out there. Yeah, you got to be real careful. When we were out there in December, uh, Kevin ran the 12 miles, and he was, doing, he was very comfortable, but he stopped, and we were taking the obligatory pictures out in the middle of nowhere, and within about five minutes, he got so cold that it took us almost 40 minutes inside a car that was as hot as could be for him to to, to quit shaking. So you got to be real careful. When we pull him off the road, we'll have to get him in the car very quickly, get the, the wet clothes off of him, because at that temperature, that wet wet and temperature don't don't mix well. Has he been running before? Like, has he, has he or is he now like this is like when he saw this idea, this is what he wanted to no, do? No, no. Ke- Kevin started running. He started running marathons for Chelsea uh, about five years ago. And progressed from that into the ultras. Um, he's been running 24-hour, 100-mile races for a while. He dreams up these ridiculous things occasionally. Two years ago, we were in Italy where we did a 178-and-a-half-mile race from Milan to San Remo. We had 48 hours to do it. He did it in 47 hours and 20 minutes. Wow. Um, but, you know, it, so he this he's he's a seasoned ultra runner. Uh, but still, this is stretching. This is probably the most... Uh, the the most dangerous thing that we've ever done. How does he come up with these ideas? Uh, you know, I I wish I knew because then I could kind of prevent them. But <laughs> you know, no, he 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 just looks for um, for things that will make an impact. And you know, and part of what he looks for is things that will mimic what kids go through with pediatric cancer. And that's there's a lot of symbolism in this run, the stark environment, uh, the the isolation that he'll have when he's out there by himself on the road running. Um, the, the the pain that, that he's going to go through, you know, kids go through this every day when they're going through the chemotherapy, they're going through the, the treatments, they've got the ports in, they're getting poked constantly. Yeah. It's a horrible environment. They're, they're isolated from, from all their friends. So, so we try to find symbolism in all these runs and these events that we do. You know, I have so many questions for him, so it's going to be an interesting Saturday. Yeah. If he, I don't, I don't know how it's going to go, but uh, right now we're talking about an event that's taking place Saturday, raising money for pediatric cancer. There's a race that's taking place later this year, right? Correct. So it's going to be 300 miles in Alaska. Yes. It's negative 20 degrees. Negative 20 degrees. We'll start. Uh, we'll start running November 16th, and we finish November 24th at Dead Horse Alaska at exactly 8:05 a.m., which is exactly his 50th birthday. So this is his 50th birthday present to himself, basically. Is his legs just jacked? <laughs> they like, are. like he's like, yes, they, they are. They are. Like, I can imagine if some, if I ran like a hundred miles one time, my legs would be jacked yeah. more jacked than they are now. But he does that like, it, as like, yeah. oh, that's what I did for breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> What's his motivation? What goes through your head whenever you're running in in that temperature? What does he? You know, that's channel? a good question for him. And you guys, I ask him, but I'll tell you, you know, part of it is his focus is truly on. Raising awareness for pediatric cancer, and I think when it go when he's running, that's what he's thinking about. He's thinking about the kids. You know, the whole delivering hope concept is we're delivering hope to these kids. We're delivering. He will be running with a backpack with the name of as many pediatric cancer survivors or children that have passed away as he can in that backpack. We're delivering them to the top of the world. That's the idea of delivering hope. We're delivering them to the Dead Horse Alaska Post Office, which is the northernmost point of any road in the United States of America. So he's gonna have a backpack on, and he will have the backpack. names with kids the names, names of the kids in the backpack. Correct. Wow. Right now. So it's... actually, if anybody's listening, if you've got, if you know of a child uh, that's a pediatric cancer survivor, or currently struggling with pediatric cancer, 
Go to deliveringhoperun.org. There's a little link there where we can make sure that your your child or some child that you know's name is in that backpack. That's awesome. That's so cool. Um, one of the things that we we do here at KHEA Radio is we support some of these things, the, these these functions. For you, how did you get involved in Delivering Hope, and, and why was that so important for you as a person? Uh, delivering Hope to me was it, it's more it's more being involved in Snowdrop and. Being involved in Snowdrop does allow me to, to give time and energy back to a cause that I believe in, which is fighting pediatric cancer. You know, my mother passed away at 63 of brain cancer, and, and it was horrible. But she lived 63 years. Mm. Um, these kids are born many times with this. They don't ask for this. It's not some lifestyle thing they did. It's not some mistake they made along the way. They, they are cursed with this from the time they're born or shortly thereafter, and many of them pass away before they have a chance to live. It's just not fair. And and so I'm very passionate about this. And, and when Kevin comes with these crazy ideas, once we link into the symbolism and realize that we're going to be able to take this and be able to raise awareness even a little bit to the rest of the world about what's going on with pediatric cancer and what these kids go through, I'm all over it. I'm, I'm ready to support. I'm ready to give my time and energy and figure out how we can make these things happen just so that we can bring the awareness up. You know, um, for us, we've talked about this before about how, you know, KHEA, as I'm sure Kevin and, and uh, his, his radio station as well has, is it's it's a microphone. It's a megaphone. You yep. know, you get it. You get a project. And I love the fact that this is an, a cause that's helping raise research money and helping hopefully maybe one day find a, find a cure um, because these these are kids. These are children. These are people. I mean, I, I can't imagine not having the childhood that I had, you right. know, where it's like I could go out and I could play football if I wanted to, or I could stay in and play video games and get a round shape like I did, <laughs> you know, but that, that's the, the, the choice and the fun that I had, you know, as a right. kid that some of these kids don't get that opportunity. Right. You know, and the ultimate goal is to, to eradicate pediatric cancer. The other cool thing about this organization is the second part of it, which is I don't care what financial situation you are in. If your kid goes through pediatric cancer, if they survive to college age, you're tapped out and this organization allows us to give scholarships to every level of kid that lives long enough to be able to go to college and, and we want to make that happen we want to give them the opportunity to go to college because even if they've beat cancer their bodies have been beat up and and, and you know and and they're struggling with life um and, and to give them an opportunity and give them the financial means to actually go to college after they've been through hell and back is, is something that's also great you know, part of this organization. You know, we want to eradicate pediatric cancer. In the meantime, let's help these kids go to college. You know, sp- spreading awareness is is great. So what can people do? Like if someone's watching on Facebook, listening at 99.5 FM, what is the best way they can help spread awareness, letting people know about your event or just what people can do in general? You know, they, they, can, they, they can let them know about the event. They can support Snowdrop Foundation. But Snowdrop Foundation, if you go to snowdropfoundation.org, there's a lot of statistics that we have out there. Just talk to folks about it make them aware of the fact that only two percent of the the budget for for pediatric cancer research and drug medications goes to i mean for cancer medication and cancer research goes to pediatric most of it goes to adult cancer uh, derivatives there's just there's not a big focus on it and yet we have thousands and thousands we do a run at the end of the year that's 55 hours long um it's called the snowdrop ultra 55 we do it out in missouri city um, one year, we, we put crosses up for all the kids that were going to pass away during that event. Eleven kids an hour in the United States or in the in the world pass away, die from pediatric cancer. So over the course of that event, we had this massive cross field that, that developed, and it really drives it home when you think about that. That as we're sitting here talking, I mean, you've been on the air for almost an hour now, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so 11 kids in the world have passed away from pediatric cancer while we've been sitting here yapping. Yeah. And there's nothing there's nothing that we could do about it right now, but, I mean, I guess there is something you can do about it, just like spreading awareness and research. and Spreading awareness, supporting research, supporting when, when, when Congress puts money towards this, uh, to understand that there are derivatives here that are speci- that are specific to children uh, and that there are a way to eradicate. And, and I, you know, even since we started this thing 10 years ago, the, the survival rate has continued to increase. So, uh, you know, it's, it's not it, it's bleak, but it's not horrible, mm-hmm. but, but it can be better. It can be a lot better. The fact that 11 kids are passing away while we're talking is horrible. Yes, it should be zero. 
and you know, and until it gets to zero, we'll continue fighting. All right. What are some of the things that Kevin and and you and the rest of the team have have done in the past? Uh, you know, one of the things in in when when uh, Tracy was talking about Chelsea, Chelsea lives on. She's impacted more people since she's died, and she impacted a lot of people when she was alive. But we have a group uh, called uh, Team Texas. We have uh, the the Snowdrop Honor Team. This is a group of people that run for Snowdrop. We have a lot of ultra runners. We have a lot of people that run marathons, half marathons, 5Ks. They all wear Snowdrop regalia. They they spread the word by running. They run all over the world. We have people in Australia running. We have people in Europe running. We have people um, in South America all running with these t-shirts. So it brings the awareness of what's going on just simply by people going, what's that shirt about? What what? Tell me about Snowdrop. Tell me about pediatric cancer. Um, so the the awareness is, is risen through that, just through people wearing shirts that mm-hmm. say Snowdrop Foundation or I run for Chelsea or I run for kids with cancer. They ask the question. It's an opportunity then to raise the awareness of this is what these kids are going through, and this is why it's important. Wow. It's 928. This is KHEA Radio.com, 99.5 FM. It's Kickstart. We're going to take a break. You know, thank you so much for joining Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Thanks for the time. We and letting it. us know. That was that was a lot of uh, a lot of information. Again, you can go check out their social media page, check out everything they have going on. And me and Kurt, we're going to have the opportunity to, to visit on Saturday. Yeah, we're super with. excited. Three o'clock, we're going to be on, so make sure that you tune in for that. Looking forward to having you guys there. Thanks. Boom. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want some coffee? Oh, good. Okay. That, not yet. That's our 10 o'clock guest. All right. Hey, so if you have any questions, feel free to let us know um, about those events that are going to be taking place. It is, uh, yeah, this Saturday, 24 hours. Me and Kurt are going to be uh, there, I think, about 3 o'clock. It's at Peak Performance Warehouse in in Friendswood. So we've had them in studio before, and I'm excited. You know, it's really cool to see how these worlds collide, like uh, Miss Susan Leaning, you know, and, and the cookies that, that she makes, and it's always for charity, just to see how this, you know, led to, to meeting Tracy. And then it comes back around to the Peak Performance Warehouse. And I love our community. And, man, we love getting the opportunity to meet people and then just see how the world is really small. You know, and then having the opportunity to meet Kevin Klein and see what what he's doing over there, and about to go run 300 miles, and you know, with us giving giving to the cause, I mean, we're not able to go run, you know, 300 miles, even in 77 degree weather, but you know, we're going to be able to donate, and you know, kind of, it's almost like we're doing it with them, you know, taking those names to the top. So it's it's really, man, it's really cool to learn about all this stuff. So we got, uh, man. I think I see the, the the hippie. I smelled it. <laughs> hey, can you hand me some of that uh, chlorine in the yellow packet? The chlorine. Thank you so much. Yeah, the chlorine for the for the drink. The doctor chopper was like, "What are you guys doing to me?" And then something to stir. No, the uh, the chlorine, the yellow. Oh, okay. <laughs> Splenda. Yeah, I want a Splenda. So I'm about to uh, have this coffee. <laughs> Give me two sticks. So let us know again. What do you guys got going on? Man, that's going to be an amazing event on Saturday. They're going to raise some money. I mean, they have the potential to raise all $200,000 for the year in that one day. This cause, it's such a great cause. Like pediatric, raising money for pediatric cancer for kids. I mean, they didn't do anything. They were just born into this. I could smell you. I could smell he it said he coming. <laughs> Not you What's up, man? <laughs> Dude, we didn't know you were jacked. You walk in, you look. I didn't know your last time you had a jacket on or something. Oh, yeah. It's from from all the hard work, huh? Bro, when you move about twenty thousand pounds of soil a day, sometimes it just accidentally happens. You're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna look all right. <laughs> Dude, have a seat, man. I'm I'm glad you're able to uh, to come hang out with us today. You doing uh, good? Oh, fantastic. I mean, things are blowing up. It's crazy. That's you, good. You told me like, man, it's uh, every day. It's just Busy, busy, busy. Uh, moving, I'm telling you, I'm probably driving 200 miles a day just to get compost. Because really? no one in our area carries, well, there's one person in our area, but I'm very specific about what I use. Uh, so I get my stuff from a place called The Ground Up. Okay. And so, you know where Britmore is outside of of uh, the Beltway? I don't. That's that's where you get the, the real stuff, the good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, right outside the Beltway off of I-10. 
Okay. On the west side. That's far. Yeah. Bro. So, <laughs> 200 miles a day just like, to go get the good stuff. I got to wake up at 5 o'clock and have my trailer hooked up by 6 if I want to make it there by 7. Yeah. So I can be back here hopefully by 9 because, you know, traffic is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we got we got 12 seconds. We're going to go on the FM as well, and we'll keep it going. We're talking to Hippie Fertilizing. Hippie Fertilizing. Let's go. Yeah. Good morning. You're listening to KHEA Radio 99.5 FM. This is Kickstart. I'm Guardy. And I'm Kurt. And we have a special guest in studio. We got AJ. What's up, man? Man, just out there spreading compost, spreading hippie juice everywhere. Spreading love. Oh, man. And spreading environmental awareness. Yes. Right? Education. Trying to get people uh, to understand they're not weeds. They're plants. You know, you actually gave me that information last time and i've learned i've actually started looking at my yard differently like with the, the little clovers and the little you know white flowers that i always called them weeds but now they don't really bug me as much because oh, also you God. told me that whenever they get <laughs> mowed over that it's it's just spreading like that good nutrients back into the grass absolutely it's helping uh with nitrogen it's helping with organic matter and it's helping those are little pollinators so it helps with bees yeah, and bees are important. It pretty much makes. I remember one time I wasn't informed. I was just not in, like I, like you informed me this, but I didn't know like how important bees were to the world. Like ever, I was just like, oh man, it's just a bee like scary. Like no, it makes the whole world literally go round. It, it really does, and you know a lot of people really raise an eyebrow when we talk about money, right? Mm-hmm. Bees and pollinators contribute to tens of billions of dollars in agriculture. That would not be possible without them. They've done studies uh, in China to see if people could mimic the, I guess, like the effectiveness of bees. Not even close. Wow. They sell bags of pollen, and what they'll do is they'll go out to these these farms and literally pollinate plants with little Q-tips. They ain't getting nearly as much done as a little busy bee. <laughs> and that's just programmed into the bee. They, they just do it just right. because that's what they were born to do. So here's something really cool, though. I took a native plant class a couple weekends ago, so now I'm native plant level one certified. Okay. Ooh, right? Yeah, you told me that on a Saturday. Eight yeah. hours, right? Oh, man. Worth it? Yes. Okay. So awesome. It was at the Arm and Bayou Nature Center. If you have time to go and take a native plant class, do it. If you have time to go to the Arm and Bayou Nature Center, do it. It's so beautiful. Where is Arm and Bayou Nature Center? On Barry Boulevard, uh, going towards Red Bluff. Okay, yes, Arm and Bayou. There's like a little park over there. Uh, there's there's Bay Area Park before yes. Arm and Bayou Nature Center. Arm and Bayou Nature Center is beautiful. They have, a, they have a house that's over 100 years old that was moved from Galveston to that place. Mm-hmm. And... It's open on the weekends. Like, I used to volunteer there with my gr- grandmother when I was little, and they would be out there making butter and soap and That's cool. uh, molasses with cane sugar. Yeah. Is that oh, something you would... Speaking of molasses... I was going to say, can you spread that on the grass? Absolutely. <laughs> Remember we <laughs> ate some. Yeah. I do. Yeah, it was black. Oh. It was like black gold molasses or something. Uh, golden Barrel. <laughs> golden Barrel. is the brand. It's a food-grade brand because I'm not really fond of horticultural molasses. Okay. Uh, it's like the same price if you buy it per gallon. And I don't know the difference. What's the difference? The difference is food-grade molasses doesn't have sulfur in it. Okay. The other difference is, and this is what I've been told. I haven't dug too much into the research because I used two different brands, and I was like, oh, well, you know, the proof is in the pudding. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I didn't really care much beyond that. But what I was told by other guys is that horticultural molasses is like the back end of it. It's the cheap stuff, and it's crazy because it's you're paying the same price, but yeah. they're giving you, you know, the— the low grade of it. Yeah, get want, the good stuff. I want the good stuff. And, and we should give the the best to our yard and, and our grass, right? Well, most importantly, to our soil. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's all about the soil, soil structure. You feed the soil right, your plants are going to grow. Wow. So yesterday, I was outside playing with my kids. My my daughter's two. My son is six. They were throwing the ball back and forth. I was playing with them. And my daughter, she she kept doing this thing where she would fall on the ground, you know, on purpose. She was just having fun. And it reminded me you know, of our conversation together when you're saying like, man, think about all the chemicals that people are putting on their grass. And then your kids go out and play in it. You have your pets go out in it. And what do you, what do you want them to like pretty much be laying down it? 
you know that it reminded me of that and so i i was i had more comfort i was okay knowing that my daughter was laying down in grass that has been you know cared for with your advice and natural stuff on and it and fertilized with microlife yeah and and right. what is that what does that mean microlife microlife uh, Microlife Organic Fertilizers. It's a brand. It's a brand that I carry. It's the brand that we primarily use besides our hippie juice, which is my own mixture. Uh, yeah, well, it worked because so my, my grass in the front, you can tell a difference between, you know, one of my neighbor's yard. They didn't they didn't do anything as far as I know. And but my grass, I had to call yesterday. I was like, guys, because I, I don't I don't cut my own grass. I was like, guys, I got to get somebody. Someone needs to come out here. I need my ga- my grass cut. You know, it's it's just growing. It's growing and growing, and growing. And, so that's a good thing. That's what that I like. That particular fertilizer uh, that you got is Microlife Hybrid. That stuff is a true like <laughs> sixteen week slow release fertilizer. Really, it's amazing. And then if it, you put like compost on top of it, woo! What exactly is compost made out of? Uh, compost is made out of many, many, many things. Okay, I use more of like a plant based compost. Okay. Because the compost can be made out of cow manure, horse manure, uh, all kinds of manure materials. Um, it, sometimes, and this is going to be gross, but it, some compost products are even made out of, like, have human waste byproducts mm-hmm. in them. Wow. And that'll work? Uh, it, it does work. It really yes. does. Some people get all picky about heavy metals in soil. So I'm very particular. Plus, I I don't want to use a product that stinks. And yeah. Every single time, hands down, I use our compost, and people are like, "Oh, that doesn't smell like I thought it would." Mm-hmm. Like, wow. Yeah. Do you put that on top of the grass? Absolutely. We spread it in about a quarter inch to a half inch layer, typically. And and you know it's awesome because it's good for your grass. It feeds it's the soil. Tree. Is that what it does? Absolutely. It improves the soil structure. It adds to good bacteria, fungi. It adds organic matter. It adds loads of carbon that's gonna just totally improve your soil structure. And it's also great, say, if you kind of chemically destroyed your lawn, which is most of our business. Uh, it, it helps regenerate that biology and kind of detox your lawn. Okay. And that helps with, with curb appeal. That helps people notice. Like if they drive by your house, you can tell whenever somebody takes care of their grass, takes care of the yard. Check this out. So we had a skeptical customer, and I still think he's skeptical, you know, older gentleman, been on the Scots program for probably whole, his whole <laughs> life. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm just gonna, I'm going to try you guys out. All right. One week later, his neighbor calls. Hey, whatever you did to his lawn, do it to mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take some of what he's having. Give me and the hippie juice. Not only that, no joke, this was a phone call yesterday. He's like, and I'm going to have you do it to my mom's house. That's cool. Solid. Hey, so we got Amber Herner, family-owned Butler's Courtyard over in Lake City. It's a, it's like a wedding venue, event venue. It's been yeah. a very historic place. They said, send him to Butler's Courtyard to help our grass. When I was thinking about my house, like curb appeal, that same thing goes for like businesses and event venues. Is that something that you work with businesses as well? Uh, not yet. Okay. I don't typically do commercial stuff, but also when I work with people, I try to make it very clear that we're not here to kill weeds. We're not here to kill anything. We're here to support soil biology, and we're here to help you have a healthier environment, ecosystem, a safe place to play. Okay. So if you're looking for like a weed-free environment, that's not me. Okay. One of the things that uh, we start, I started looking at houses. I'm trying to get a house. Um, I think I can afford it. Maybe one <laughs> That's day. That's the best part. One <laughs> maybe, day. maybe one day. Possibly. Do- we'll find out. The next um, hundred years. <laughs> after I find the house and I go, I want that house. And then I go, you, you can't, can't afford, afford this. That. You can't afford anything. Your, your credit's you too. for free at KHEA <laughs> Radio. You can't afford anything. Uh, anyways, one of the things that we, we, we looked at a house and I even said, I'm like, I can't live here. The grass is too good. How am I ever going to have, Ant- you know, you guys come in and, and help? I said, Anthony, I can't have this house because the grass is too good. Hippie fertilizer <laughs> is going to be mad. <laughs> I told him it's it's a pro Like having green grass is one thing. Having like healthy soil and grass, but then you have to maintain it. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, there's landscaping. There's all kinds of things. You're never there. You know, you're. it's a process. Well, that that's a matter of opinion. Okay. Okay. Yes, it is a process, but it should be a process and fun. Mm-hmm. It should be a process and, oh, I want this for me. 
Uh, like just recently, because I'm like the epitome of a lazy gardener. Mm-mm. I'm not <laughs> trying to trim bushes and have this like you. I would never put my house on a magazine okay. ever. At least not yet. Yeah. So lately though, I went and invested in a little uh like pollinator plot in my backyard and I'm gonna expand it. What does that mean, a pollinator plot? So I got a bunch of flowers that are great for hummingbirds, bees. Uh, I was told yesterday that two bumblebees were spotted in my little patch. Oh. And I'm so excited because I've never seen a bumblebee <laughs> around my house. And now I'm like, oh my God, it worked. Does that make you feel proud? Like, <sighs> No, it's not a proud feeling. It's it's just, it's a happiness. Okay, I, it makes me feel like a proud dad. Like if that happened to me, it was like, my babies, the plants, the soil, uh-huh. it's working, it's doing what it's supposed to do. I'm right. doing my part. I mean, I guess it is like pride, but yeah. it's, it's I don't it's just a whole happiness of like, ooh, I'm I'm working towards at my own house towards the mission that I talked about. Yeah. Where did that mission come from for you? How did that get ingrained in you so much that that this is what you do? This is what you believe in? Well, it was a process of stuff. I didn't realize until I think we were where I was here last time. Mm -hmm. My aunt was watching and she said, you know, your grandmother would be so proud. And like, even right now, (laughs) makes me want to cry. (laughs) Because I used to do all this stuff with her and I didn't, I didn't even think about that until she, she messaged that. And I was like, man, I did used to help her with her roses. And she used to take me to the nature center ever since I was knee high to a grasshopper. And then my dad even though he's like Mr. Roundup and Scott's, any place he ever lived, rented, owned, whatever, he'd rip everything out, landscape it, have always have a little vegetable garden patch. Yeah. Everything. So, you know, and then I like, I took what he did at the house and I kind of turned it into my job. Yeah. And then along with that, what really, really set me in this organic path though, was using chemicals myself and getting sick for a very short time. And I noticed immediately so after that, I was like, I read the labels. I'm supposed to have nearly a hazmat suit on to kill weeds. Yeah. No one's paying me enough to kill myself. No, thank you. And I don't want to kill you or anybody else. And then I did all the homework and I was like, sporting soil biology is for the, it's, it's the wind. It's, yeah. It's all there. It's everything. Yeah. Talking to you, it's really cool to see because you 100% believe in, in what you're doing and there's a cause and a reason. And then to learn it's kind of who you are, you know, with, with family and it, it's, it's in your blood, I suppose. Oh, you know? it is. Growing up doing it. And, um, it's really cool to see. Hey, you, I see you have another bag. It's micro life ultimate. This one is blue. I think the, the other one was pink. Yes. The one I gave you was micro life hybrid. Okay. That is like primarily for grass, right? It's going to still support all your other plants, but it, you know, we primarily use it on lawns. Okay. Uh, now this ultimate is excellent if you are wanting to do your own gardening, whether it's a flower garden, vegetable garden, and it works great on the grass as well. So what I want you to do is I want you to give this away to somebody. We could do that. Okay. Yeah. So we got a, it's a, it's a blue bag. So this is going to be for someone who is like gardening. Would they use it as like pot, as potting soil or just sprinkle it on top as like a fertilizer? Uh, you want to... If you're, you can sprinkle it on top like a fertilizer. If yeah. You, if you choose to use it on your grass or something, but if you are building a small little garden patch, you want to mix this in your soil. Okay. That's how you're going to get the best results. Okay. Whether it's again flowers, bushes, shrubs, uh, or vegetable gardens, it's great for all of that. Hey, earlier you mentioned something about compost. <laughs> earlier you mentioned something about compost and it helping the trees as well. You know, not just the grass; it helps the trees. Um, and that's not really something I, I suppose I think about, but I think I saw a picture that you posted the other day and it was a picture of a tree like before and after. So that kind of goes with you saying, Hey, you're supporting the microbiology. You're supporting the soil. Cause all that affects the trees and everything else you don't think about. And here's the crazy part to me. Okay. Especially I live in Leak city. Leak city is known for our oak trees, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It's in the logo. Yeah. yeah. Or, I don't know, they may have changed it up. It was like a sailboat. We want the we want the oak trees back. You hear me, Leak City? We, we want, want the, the oak trees. tree lo- logo I'm back. I'm tagging the mayor right now. <laughs> yeah. No joke. Uh, but often, especially in these older developed neighborhoods, man, sometimes they have the most beautiful, beautiful trees. And that to be replaced 
is like a $250,000 operation if you were to try and replace a big grown tree, Mm -hmm. right? Maybe a half million dollars. No joke. And people want to focus on their lawn. Wow. And like our lawn is super important. It is. But our trees are like much more valuable. They have a story too. Oh, and they've been around. It's like a hundred year old tree. Yeah. If I could be like a tree, that would be awesome. Because mm-hmm. no matter who you are, where you come from, you can sit under that tree. Yeah. It'll provide shade. It has weathered storms. It has tried to keep things together. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've always said that life, like people in your life are like a tree. Mm-hmm. You know, there's three types. There there are people who are the leaves. You know, the seasons change. They come, they go, they fall, they wither, they die, right? And then you have the branches. They're the, the people that you think are like, you know, going to be there for you. And you step onto the branch and it breaks and falls, you know, and they're not there anymore. But then there are people who are the roots of the trees. You know, a tree can have millions and millions of leaves and branches and only a few roots and still be successful. And those are the people that you want to keep around in your life. You know, not he- necessarily true, but I, I love where you're going with that. See? Trees have lots of roots, though. Lots right. Roots. But they could. <laughs> You right. preface that by saying I always say, and I've literally never heard you say that. <laughs> also, I say this all the time. Also, something else I just realized: Ethan looks really cool in his sunglasses, like he's about to be the next big '80s movie star. But What's I think up, he did that bro? so he can sleep, because sometimes he's like kind of dozing off in the middle of our stuff. No, that's not why. <laughs> Are you literally sleeping over here, <laughs> Ethan? Uh, Wake up, Ethan! I'm gonna take your chair away. Oh no! And then you have to stand up, and then you can't sleep and stand. I actually hear that standing is more productive, like you know, work and stuff. That's when, true. Whenever I uh, had students and I taught and they were falling asleep in class, I made them stand up. They had to stand. You can't, you can't sleep when you stand. You're like a dictator. When I was in school, I was just put off to the side so I could stand up all day because I couldn't think if I sat down. Really? Really. I could like, they would have be like, get over here to the side. You can stand and tap your foot all you want. And then I'd be like, get everything done. Knocking it out. Yeah. I like that. Whenever there's <laughs> teachers that realize, hey, this environment is good for this person. This environment's good for that one. And then you, you go to their strengths. So for our area, whenever it comes to like yards, like what is the strength of our like environment? Like what should we be planting for this time of year? What should we be uh, doing to be on the Gulf Coast? You know what I mean? Uh, that's a that's a loaded question, man. But <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. I would recommend going to places like Grappon Gardens or Moss Nursery mm-hmm. uh, and looking for native Gulf Coast native plants. Okay. Because Texas native, really, if you ask for a Texas native plant, like you're gonna get a cactus or something. We have <laughs> we're one of the, I think California may be the other state, but we are known for having five different drastic climate zones. Okay. So you want Gulf Coast native plants. The other thing, though, when you when you ask that question, what I think about is is our expectations of uh, our lawns, right? Mm-hmm. What did we have the last three months? It was a bunch of it was a bunch of rain, and it was kind of chilly. The weather went up and down, up and down big time. Yeah, right. And loads and loads of rain. So people, my number one phone call, AJ, I got weeds. I got weeds. I got weeds. I'm like, and in some cases. I'm like, well, is your is your lawn holding a lot of water? Yeah, yeah. It's been flooding a lot. I know, it rained a lot. So our lawns are, like, adapting to the mm-hmm. weather, and we kind of want to force them to just be, like, St. Augustine. Yeah. And it's like, hold on. This plant is growing here where other plants won't grow. Maybe that's a good thing, and it's adapting to its mm-hmm. environment because I swear our environment kind of slightly changes from year to year. Yeah. That's cool. So Kurt is looking to buy a house soon, and he Maybe. was. Well, I, I think I was examining the yard more than he was because he was looking like, "Oh, the outside of the house looks good." I'm like, "Look at these trees!" It was a big old palm tree. It had these other trees that look like Dr. Seuss trees. Is it a, a juniper or something? They they it's like a Christmas tree, but really slim and okay, goes high. Uh, typically, like an Italian cypress. Okay, yeah. but they were they were beautiful, and I was telling him, I was like, "Dude, the yard alone, like the size of it." And and everything else, it looks like it would be, you know, a solid investment, Mm -hmm. you know, because you can't those those trees have stories and they're almost like passed down. In this case, it'd be passed down from one house owner to the next. But it's like a family heirloom. Like if he gave that house to his kids one day, they would be able to say, like, I used to swing from these trees. You know, it's really cool. 
I would love it when I, cause I don't have like my own house yet. Mm -hmm. So when I have my own house, I want to have a myriad of Texas native trees, plants, and my favorite really is is like different roses. Yeah. Uh, so I want all these plants that I can like, and hopefully I'll get to hear when I have kids. Dad, let's go play in the garden. I'll be like, yes. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Chef Mary Bass said, in quotes, look at these trees is the most adult comment ever said on this show. <laughs> <laughs> agreed. So agreed. You know, I, Gardy made fun of me before when he was like, Kurt, you, you yell at me all the time for, for talking about grass and grass. <laughs> but you, you know do. What? But as I start looking for houses, it's the first thing that I notice now. Like on the outside, because I don't want to pull up in a house. Like I don't want people showing up at my house and it's like a mud pit, a mud pit, no grass, no grass, <laughs> or you know I want it green and luscious, and I want it to look like <laughs> these these adjectives. <laughs> you know, I, that's what I want. I want people pulling up and be like, oh yeah, I can live in this house because it's got you know they take care of their yard. Yeah. That palm tree was literally amazing. I don't know if that's like a famous palm tree and people know what we're talking about, but it sits on the corner of Grafton, 5 521 Grafton, and it's gorgeous. Where is Grafton? In Lamarck. In Lamarck. Okay. In Lamarck. Yeah. It's awesome. Is I was like, this is this is crazy. And they had a she shed in the back, which is also awesome. Cool. Hey, is are palm trees Gulf Coast like native? Some of them are. The only one I truly know off the top of my head is a uh, dwarf palmetto. Okay. This one wasn't a dwarf. I don't know. I honestly don't know, but this one was really big. Uh, I grew up in Lamarck as well, and we had two palm trees in the backyard, but then they ended up not doing so well, and so we had to pay a lot of money to get them removed. One of the biggest ones that I can think of off the top of my head is canary palms. Oh, my God. They can look really big and beautiful, but whenever you trim them, they have these thorn-type things on them that are about a foot long. Hmm. And if you're not careful, that sucker will murder you. Wow. So here's a question. This is from Amber with Butler's Courtyard. She said, uh, do you know anything about mulberry trees? I have one on my new lot and no clue how to care for it or what to do. Like a mulberry tree. I do not. Okay. And uh, Mary wants us to reintroduce who you are. This is AJ with Hippie Fertilizer. Tell us a little bit about Hippie Fertilizing. What do you guys do and, and uh, how people can get in contact with you? Uh, you can get in contact through our website. Our website also has my number on it. You can contact us through Facebook. We really are able to respond through Facebook pretty quickly. And pretty soon I'll have another number up because my little sister now is my salesperson. That's, that's and, cool. And so if, if you see, you know, a little four foot six woman <laughs> running around in a hippie fertilizing shirt, it's probably my sister. And she was out there last year working with me, right? So she has done the work. Uh, so if she suggests something, she, she knows what she's doing. That's cool. Uh, it's, it's cool to see the business, I guess, grow. You know, and, and for you to be like, hey, I got my sister, you know, be able to employ, have people work with you. Yeah. Uh, so I just bought like a new little truck mm -hmm. recently, and we're going to put a little wrap on the back of it. I've got a new tank. We're, we're moving and shaking, and it's so, so awesome to have followers, fans, customers. They're like, they encourage me all the time. Yeah. AJ, we love what you're doing. We love your message. It, and to have customers call me and tell me what you said. Right? Man, AJ, I look at my lawn different now. I don't even see them as weeds anymore. Honestly, that stuff like lights up my heart. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I'm making a difference. Yes. We're making a difference. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I, I saw something else that somebody posted. Either you posted or somebody else posted on one of your pages. And they said, if it bothers you that much, you can remove it by hand. Mm -hmm. Why sprinkle something else that's going to damage, you know, the, the biology and some other stuff? If you don't like it, yeah, you get to pull it out. If not, hey, is it really that bad? I think that was maybe a comment Yeah, on a post. And so true. I, you know, I'll, I'll tell you all a little, little secret. Sometimes I go out in my front yard and I hand pull weeds. Yeah. Because so, it's, it's spring now. It's time to get that grass back. If anyone ever did pull up at my house, they're going to be like, you don't know about grass. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be like, yeah, but check my water bill. <laughs> yeah, hippie with a haircut. Nobody knows grass like like AJ. Hey, can you, can you share, you know, uh, one more time how somebody can get a hold of you and then anything else that you would like to? And we're going to be giving this bag away. We're going to have to figure out the best way to do that. I'm thinking Instagram. 
We haven't ever done an, uh, an Instagram giveaway. And I think that'd be cool and unique for, for hippie fertilizing. Yeah, we'll be we'll be brainstorming, come up with something good. It'll be great. So, yeah, uh, share one more time how somebody can get a hold of you and, um, you know, anything else you'd like to share. Check out hippiefertilizing.com. Search for us on, on Facebook. Search for Hippie Fertilizing. We also have a member Hippie Fertilizing. My sister has her own page. And do you have Instagram? I do. I'm not as active on it. Again, it's it's you can search hippie fertilizing. That might change us then. Maybe we will go back to making it a Facebook something. We'll talk it out. We'll figure it out. It'll be good. Uh, but primarily, my Facebook page and my website are the best ways to contact hippie fertilizing. Cool. Hey, well, we appreciate you making some time, you know, to come in here today. And we'll be talking to you soon. And I'm going to keep you updated on my grass as i as this journey goes it's just getting started because the season has changed it's been beautiful the past couple days and i'm excited to see how how I keep, my grass keeps going especially you said it's like time released uh, right that's really neat i never heard of that before only with like medication so remember <laughs> everybody nobody knows grass like a hippie this is khea radio 99.5 fm stay tuned we're we'll talking about that that crawfish event that's taking place cajun throwdown in galveston perfect boom AJ, thank you, man. Okay. You appreciate that there? You? Yeah, it's good there. Okay. All right, Facebook. Hey, let us know what do you have going on today. Are you a fan of, of crawfish? Are you a fan of of grass in your yard? Because we just had AJ in. He was sharing once again everything that he has going on, which is really cool. You know, it's really cool because I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of my yard. I'm a big fan of my grass. I'm a big fan of making sure that everything looks nice on the curb appeal. How, how's it going, guys? What's happening? Y'all doing good? Oh, yeah. So we're going to have some guests in, and we're going to be talking about everything that's going on for the, the Cajun throwdown. And I'm down to throw down, you know? Throwing down, it means a lot of stuff to different people. But when it comes to crawfish, I think it means I'm about to eat as, as much as I can. So uh, how are y'all doing today? Good. good. It's good to see y'all. I like your hat, or is that your hair? Um, <laughs> I like to feel young on the weekends, so <laughs> so I put it on. We need some hippie fertilizing. Uh, you know what? I was thinking about that because I love uh, this time of year, and uh, if I watch the Masters quite uh, all the rounds every year, it comes on. So I try to get I try to match uh, that color green to my yard. Yes. So. I've never accomplished it yet, <laughs> but uh, I, the fertilizer that I like to put down um, is, 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 you know, Scott's. Yes. But it, it tells you, you, you know, water it in, keep your pets in after so long, yada, yada, yada. But, man, if there's if this guy has a 100%, you know, organic way to fertilize your grass, I mean, I, I'm a supporter. Yeah, it's MicroLife is that is the brand. I actually used it about three weeks ago, and now I, I can tell. But it's a it's a pink bag, and so it has like the the nitrous and you know the stuff that'll help your grass turn green. And um, this one is actually for he said more for like gardening and planting and stuff that you would be able to mix with your soil. Lower nitrogen, phosphorus, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So the way he got started is because he got sick you know he was doing landscaping and he you know was putting this stuff in and he got sick and then he started researching like man i'm around this stuff all the time and it tells you hey don't come into contact with your skin don't breathe it in you know where all this stuff he's like what why am i doing this you know so he looked for a different way and he found he found it so it's pretty cool you that's, know from i got kids and they're playing in the grass and hey, stuff even yesterday. Yeah, i tell you that's awesome because i was just telling him the story about my grandmother my mom's mom who used to uh, fertilize her own stuff? Well, she had a chicken coop and cows, so she did it the 100% natural way. And I have never, I haven't found a, a, a better solution than what she used to do. I live in Deer Park, so I don't have cows and chickens around to do that. Mm -hmm. But if there's, the, I mean, I'm going to support this guy for for sure. Yeah, yeah, check him out. So it's yeah, hippie fertilizing. Um, AJ, he's he's a good guy and. It works because I've, I've used it in my house, and I can tell you right now. But there is somebody who has that master's green grass like three houses down from me. and it makes I, you sick. Yeah, it does. And I was telling Kurt earlier, and he's kind of like, Guardian, I'm starting to get concerned. Because I'm tempted to go knock on the door and be like, what's going on? Because right now I have the binoculars. Like anytime somebody comes and mows the grass, I'm like, what are they putting on this grass? 
Right. I haven't seen anybody spray anything. They're just like mowing it. This I think it's fake. I Some, yes. I need well, spray they, paint. And they do, but man, uh, if I, I I've watched the guys from that place and <laughs> they have gloves and boots and suits and I'm like, why do I want that on my grass? Yeah. I mean I don't need to I don't mean to badmouth anybody, but you know, if they have to wear that, what am I supposed to wear in my own yard? Exactly. So that's uh I'll watch the par three tournament today, by the way, and watch and just <laughs> look at the grass and jealous. Just, <sighs> yeah, how, feeling bad about how do you get a putting surface own. that green? I don't know, because you're not gonna get it in Texas. Wow. Well, there you go. Hey, so Tiny. Yes. It's been a while. We met you on the on the flatbed of your of your truck. Yeah. You're sitting on the back. We pulled up and met you, and you're like, how's it going? That's and it. That was a pretty cool meeting. There's nothing. There's <laughs> no better way to meet somebody than on the back of a tailgate. Yeah. We were hanging out <laughs> at Skydive Galveston, and they were saying, hey, there's a, an event taking place. Y'all should check it out. And so we actually got your number and, and met you like maybe like 15 minutes later. Can you share what's going on? Uh, the Bontal Roulette Cajun Throwdown, April 26th and 27th. Um, what we did was... Me and my wife uh, got together, and we wanted to bring our Cajun roots down to the island. We love Galveston. It's probably one of the closest. The Strand area is probably one of the closest places that I could get to the city of New Orleans. Um, The food, the people, just the hospitality that the island brings. So one day, uh, my buddy Danny Higgins and and, uh, Joey Buck got with me and said, hey, You know, we have this big property out here. We were wanting to do something with it, maybe pick your brain. So instead of picking my brain, I just told him, hey, look, (laughs) let me use it. I know what to do for it. I know what to use it for. So we came, uh, you know, we started brain shooting ideas, me and my wife and and a couple of friends of mine. So if you're going to if you're going to do it, if you're going to do a Cajun theme, Cajun's not just crawfish. It's people. It's music. It's um, it's family. It's, you know, oysters, shrimp. It's more than just crawfish. So when we when we sat down and, and we said, okay, look, we got to have entertainment. So my wife, being, you know, the perfectionist that she is, I said, well, Wayne Toops can can headline the whole thing. She said, yeah, for Friday. <laughs> and I said, what you mean for Friday? She said, baby, if we're going to do this, we're going to do this right. We're going to do it a whole weekend. We're going to, this is what we're going to do. Let's start. So we started. And when we started, when we got the train rolling, it has not stopped. And uh, we have gotten more support in Galveston from the Parks Board. Uh, give a big shout out to Brian Koontz. Big shout out to um, Jerry Fortin, who's helped us out there. Melody, um, they've been really helpful on helping us get the word out. Of course, you guys inviting us here today is a uh, is a blessing in itself. Um, but you know, when you throw something like this, it's it's really it's really special because what we have done. And what we started in the beginning, my wife gave me the idea, you know, call St. Jude. You know, let, let's give let's give something back to the community. I said, okay. So when we contacted St. Jude, they immediately said, okay, you guys, we want to make y'all a, an official um, St. Jude your way merchant. So you are now officially in some sort of capacity uh, part of St. Jude. So... When we did that, we said, you know, there's uh, Dickinson Education Foundation. They're still recovering from Harvey. Mm-hmm. Um, Galveston uh, is recovering as well. You know, Galveston County took a big hit during Harvey, and there's not a lot of people who fully understand, except for the people in Katy in that area who really got hit hard. Um, it takes years to get back to where you once were. Um, a lot of the times when this does happen, though, it, you know, you move on and you ha- not necessarily better things, but the things that you lost, you do get back at a newer, at a more, um, how, how do you say that? A, a newer landscape, if you will. Uh, so we're all about helping with that. Let, let's get, let's, let's get things moving back forward. 
Uh, but the Cajun Throwdown me it, it's family, it's uh, it's food, it's fun, it's music, it's a whole culture. Why do people enjoy crawfish so much in this area? Do you not? I love crawfish. I do too. Me I, too. I love it. We mm-hmm. cook it. We cook it all the time. Um, but when people say, because I'll tell you in Louisiana, when you say crawfish boil, everybody everybody gathers together. It's a, it's a it's just a it's just a laid back Sunday. You know, people want to just hang out in the springtime. Weather's not too hot. It's just perfect for everybody, and they just like to come and hang out and enjoy themselves. People, what, people that don't even eat crawfish want to come to a crawfish boil. It's a southern hospitality thing. Yeah, it's a lot of it's fun because it's just like a gathering. And like you said, I mean, I think the first time I had crawfish, I was in high school, and it was one of my friends had a boil at their house, and there's big picnic tables, and you just throw it all down, and everybody hangs out and eats. And we read go karts after, so like just yeah. like around the property, a crawfish boil is is an activity that can last an entire day. Throughout a day, throughout a weekend, throughout however long you want to put it on, it, and it's um, it's something special to me because I've been boiling crawfish since I was eight years old. Uh, my dad taught me how to boil crawfish. Now, it it was different back then the way they do it now because they didn't have all the seasonings and the spices and all the stuff they do now, and um, it's turned into a pretty you know Texas is a pretty amazing state. But it's one of the states where it's a they they like to contest each, they like to contest each other around here. Who does the best? What? Who throws right. the biggest party? Who does this? Who does that? So why not why not throw five thousand dollars first place to see who can really cook the best crawfish? Oh wow! So that's going to be what, what like a grand prize given? The grand prize is going to be five thousand dollars for first place to see who can cook the best crawfish. We have. Um, a lot of contests going on throughout the weekend on friday night the 26th uh before wayne tubes goes on stage we're gonna have an um a cajun kickoff cook-off hmm. where all the teams can get are, are going to those who participate are going to be able to cook their own cajun dish and they'll be judged by the wonderful pageant queens we just had a pageant over this past weekend crowned a bunch of amazing amazing people and to be queen uh so what they'll do is they'll go around to each tent and judge you know they'll they'll escort the judges and the judges gets to sit in the tent and they get to eat all these wonderful cajun dishes so that will be on friday night on um on saturday morning we will have um what else what else we have on saturday well saturday at one o'clock is the crawfish eating throwdown the crawf yes is there an eating competition there is <laughs> oh wow can you win that <laughs> uh, me no i i could probably eat about uh five comfortably and then probably like eight to nine if i like wanted to to just explode pounds or just <laughs> yeah pounds. Of course he means pounds okay i can eat nine crawfish and then i'm tapping you know out. like yes I my, my fingers are bleeding you know, i met my peeling. max yeah, so, no, about five pounds. Of yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to sit all these people in a row, mm-hmm. and we're going to weigh out crawfish. Everybody gets the same amount of weight, and you just start. You got 15 minutes. Whoever can eat the most in 15 minutes, oh, you that's win. that's cool. For 500 bucks. So that you got to peel in everything then. Yes. Everything. You do the whole process. So it's it's a matter of speed, technique, and eating, and then you just kind of. And everything's it. by weight. Well, that's cool. I like that because, well, 15 minutes, I guess you can do a lot of damage. Have you all had, like, some test runs for that no, to see, like, how much people put away? I'm afraid <laughs> because I, I don't have a stop. Have you seen this, Manny? I, I, don't, I, don't have a, I don't have a bottom. Tiny. Yeah. But, I mean, to, to earn it, I didn't know if it was because, you know, tiny stomach or, like, a, yeah. how'd he's you short. get the nickname? It's because he's, he's short. short. Sure, yeah. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> how, tall, how tall are you? Six foot six. Six foot six. So, uh. How do you get the name Tiny being six foot six? Somebody just called me Tiny one day and they <laughs> did just asked me my name and we wanna know my name for. I well, I'll just call you Tiny. Yeah. So he goes around and tells everybody, Hey everybody, this is Tiny. Tiny, this is the group. <laughs> and everybody's so, like, Hey, hey Tiny. I'm gonna, and I'm gonna tell you, I yeah. lived I lived in Louisiana at the time. And when I came back to get it was so they gave me the nickname in Galveston. So when I came back to Galveston I ran into the same guys. Of course, you know, I got their phone number. Hey, I'm going to be 
moving back here with my parents. I think I was 17 when they gave me that nickname. Mm -hmm. I came back, and Brian Ray and Richard Garcia were the two friends that I had made at the time. And they came back, and they said, what's up, Tiny? (laughs) Nobody knew my first name. They just knew me as Tiny. So it stuck. I'm not even sure I know his first name. <laughs> I for over a year ben. I knew what his real name was. Yeah. Oh wow. Some people, I mean there were some people who would call when when you know before uh, when I was still in high school, uh, there were people who would call my house and say, "Where's Tiny?" and my dad my dad would answer the phone, "Who's Tiny?" Yeah. Uh, the big guy. He goes, "Oh, you mean Daniel?" And they said, "I did not know his real name." Daniel? Huh? You who? There, there's who, one that? word that I've never been called in my entire life, and that's tiny. <laughs> I know. <laughs> what do they call you? Uh, round. <laughs> round. <laughs> round. He said, whenever he was about 18, you know, mowing the grass, and he was in shape. I was like, "You were, you were a shape?" Because I've seen your senior, your senior photos. But yeah, anyways, that's that's where that came from earlier today. Nice. So we met you, and you and you introduced yourself as, "Hey, I'm tiny." And we're like, "Well." What's up? No, well, it's, I didn't it's, know your name, easy, so I saw it. Well, it's easy to remember. It is somebody so large, and then they say tiny. It's not hard to. It's it's easy to remember. So, and yeah, I'm Tiny's I, wife. <laughs> she That's your name, name now. Yeah, she doesn't have a name either. It's just Tiny's wife. All right, we got 20 seconds. We're gonna flip it back on to the FM as well. So we're gonna keep it going. Uh, if you're interested in going, we're gonna be learning how you can get your tickets. You know how you can maybe win five thousand dollars if you cook the best crawfish. Also. Can you eat the most crawfish? Because that's going to be a fun competition. Here we go. Good morning. You're listening to KHEA Radio 99.5 FM. This is Kickstart. I'm Gardy. And I'm Kurt. It is 1014 on a Wednesday morning. It's a really nice day to eat some crawfish, even today. Uh, We got Tiny, and we got Tiny's wife in studio. We also got Jennifer in studio. We're going to be talking about the the Cajun throwdown because it's going down. Oh, yeah. It's going down April 26th and 27th. On uh, the beautiful Galveston Island, I tell you what, um, uh, the the weather today. If we can get this on that weekend, wow, money! That'd it's, be an amazing wow. event. It's, Today's a good day to eat crawfish. Are y'all going to be eating crawfish today somewhere? That Probably. doesn't sound like a bad idea. I think like, so. It's I, a god I, idea. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> our friend Matt Parker down there, down the street, uh, just opened up a, a crawfish restaurant here in Lamarck. Uh, used to be the old uh, Paradise Palapa place. Right oh. there on Newman Road, they just opened a place called Tiki and Tails. Really, it's yes. in Lamarck. Yeah, it's in Lamarck. They're open now. They're open right now, um, and that guy can now that guy can cook some crawfish. Um, what are we do? How did we not hear about this Tiki? Tiki and Tails off Newman, off of Newman Road. I think it's seven hundred one Newman. I think that's okay, the address. It is. You're, you're correct. So that's in Lamarck, seven hundred one Newman. Man, we love, yeah, the, right off of I-45, that Palapa uh, place right there. It's right there. It's very, I mean, there's plenty of parking. <clears throat> wow. Excuse me. Plenty of parking, plenty of uh, seats available. You eat under the Palapa. There's no better day than to, like today to eat under something like that. So I, I think that's where I'm going to have crawfish. So. Tiny, you, you vouch for him? He's the real deal, huh? Oh, yeah. He's pretty good. Yeah. Do you yeah. know crawfish? Like, should we trust you on crawfish? Absolutely. Why? Because I am the crawfish carnivore. Oh, how many how many crawfish pounds of crawfish could you eat in one sitting? <laughs> they said these are but you know what? these are questions I need to know. I, I will I will tell you this. Um, I, I'll email you later, or text you later, and let you know because I may, I may today have to try, yeah, I may have to try this. Get the today. answers. We're gonna get his fifteen minute. How many how many pounds can he eat in fifteen minutes to see if he could win five hundred dollars? Okay, I don't know how much Guardy can eat, but I don't know if I could ever f- watch him speedy crawfish because watching him eat crawfish like normal is like kind of dis- disgusting. He's not from here. Do he- you lick your elbows? Uh, it doesn't she quite. Does. <laughs> no, I just I've never <laughs> seen does. like so much like stuff on somebody's hands before. And oh uh, well, know. if you're eating crawfish right like she does, uh. She gets it. I don't know how it runs underneath. I have friends who won't eat crawfish with me in public. Uh, it's crazy. I'm to that point. I'm almost to that it's point. It's almost with a my massacre. Party. So we're going to have lunch, right? We can't today because we're going on air with Pierre. So, like, right after we leave here, we got to go to Clear Lake, or else, man, I would 100%. And I may go eat, get some crawfish after. After? I'm uh, down. Ooh. I'm down. I'm telling you. Y'all, you guys live in Lamarck, right? Yeah. Well, I grew up in Lamarck. I live in Leak City. Right. He lives in Tech City, like not too far from here. Well, let me tell you. I'm telling you, go try that place. I've, I've eaten that guy's crawfish before. Uh, before he opened it, he would do competitions and stuff like that. And uh, it, it doesn't disappoint. I, I can tell you that. Um, there's Pinch and Tails out in Galveston that has great crawfish, too. 
I mean, there's some small, the smaller the venue, I always remember this about good food. All your hole in the walls are better than the big ones. Mm-hmm. All your small family owned places, those are all your, your, your better places, especially to get crawfish. Wow. And I'm, I'm guessing you've had a lot of crawfish, whether it's, you know, oh. you make into yourself. You know, there's only, there's only a, a few places that I will eat restaurant wise. Yeah. Because when you when you cook that much at one time and you're trying to get it out to the masses, you just don't have time to soak in that flavor. But um, there are three places that I will eat, and that's uh, Tiki and Tails, Pinch and Tails, and Gidry's in Pasadena. If you've never we had like Bubba's Gidry's, on the Strand too, and Bubba's on the Strand, yeah, they in fact they won uh, they won quite a few awards with their uh, with their crawfish too. So all this local crawfish. Around the Galveston County area, there's no reason to drive up north. Hmm. It, it's all it's all right here. You know, there's there's a couple places that we've had it too um, that I think is really really good. It's a uh, Fab on Me Bistro and Grill. It's, it's Vietnamese style crawfish. So wow. it's right over here at 646 in Lake City. It's just a different Vietnamese. style. It is no. a different style. Yeah. But they also do different but seafood. How, how, how do they how do they cook it? Well, so well the the. So we've seen them cook it. We video them cooking it and everything. We so, don't know. <laughs> that's that's Marty's way of saying. It. Well, no. We here's the thing: the main difference. Well, there is a difference in flavor and taste. But the interesting thing that I think they do is they serve it in a bag. Like so, after they do it and they, they wipe it that. in the bag, and then they serve it in the bag, and so they put out this whole big old thing there, and that's pretty cool. One of the main styles that that I notice that that's I different. I want to know serving. what's in the bag. I just feel like it's against my religion. That's oh my god! That could be true. That could be <laughs> yeah, because the- she's Cajun. She's uh, <laughs> she's she's on the different she's on the different spectrum. Where were y'all born? Where are y'all from? I was actually born in in Galveston, Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, my mom and dad w- w- went back and forth from Louisiana to Galveston, and uh, because my dad worked in the oil, you know, off the the rigs, so they moved to Galveston for for a short period of time, and I popped out on the island and for majority of my life kind of went back and forth in fact you may know my mom do you do you attend abundant life mm-hmm. you know vivian gidry i do that's my mom okay the little short one yeah yeah the little short one. she does all the good hair for all the all the plays she does yeah yeah those plays by the way are phenomenal we, we have, have one, one coming, coming up, up this yeah i know for easter right yeah mm-hmm. yeah um yeah she's all busy doing that every time i call her she's like well i gotta go to the church we have hair stuff to do so, yeah, she's great. She's, she's she's awesome. She's phenomenal, and you know I love my mom. Uh, she's never swayed away from you know Jesus Christ and all that um, awesome stuff. And you know I used to attend here. In fact, the the one person who actually started my walk with uh, with Jesus is Brother Buddy. Yes, I walked into his office one day, and this is when I kind of just quit drinking and quit doing all that stuff. Was I walked into his office and he just asked me? He said. From the next step out of this front door of this place, what do you want to do? Because it's all up to you. Mm-hmm. Mm. And he kind of held my hand for a while. And, you know, I went through a broken leg, went through um, AFib, had all that stuff. He was there the whole way. He, he heard about it from my mom. He would always show up to my room. He's actually, he's retiring tomorrow. Tomorrow's Really? His, yeah. He's been in the ministry and, and associated, you know, with this area. He was in public education as, you know, principals yeah. and teachers, and he's done a, a lot. Brother Buddy's one of the best human beings I've ever met in my entire life. I agree. Tomorrow's his retirement party that we have. Wow. Yeah. We're super excited about. I'm going to have to send him something. Yeah. Is he in today? He's usually in on Monday, Wednesday, right? Well, yeah. I don't know. His office is now next door. Hey, right buddy, there. are you there? <laughs> not, not two times if you can hear us. So, so yeah, cool. it, when uh, when I finally got to enter, I introduced him to my wife. Uh, I think it was before we got married, right? Yes, and he was supposed to do our wedding. It, he yeah. Was, uh, he he had, said he wasn't doing them anymore. Mm-hmm. Right. So um, He retired from those at that time. Yeah, because that's the one man. That's If I had somebody, I wanted him to do it. Mm-hmm. He started, you know, he kind of, he's the one who kicked me in the right direction. So... Uh, but when I, when I, when I brought my wife to him and he said, all right, he said, just keep it going and you, you'll be blessed forever. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not ashamed to say I, I love Jesus Christ. My wife's not ashamed to say it. So, I mean, everything that we've done, I know we've been blessed because there's some, there's some answers that, you know, I ask questions to and boom. Yeah. There it is.
how did it happen? I'm not going to question it. I know where it came from. So, you know, us as a, as a married couple throw in this or something like this for the whole family to come out and enjoy. We, you know, it's just a great thing. Yeah, so y'all have the Cajun roots. You got the Louisiana ties. Do you, you know where I'm from? Well, I can, let me guess. Uh, are you from Louisiana? <laughs> 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 I only know like three or four cities. Pick one. Uh, Baton Rouge is the first one that comes to mind. <gasps> Baton Rouge because hey, of the LSU. Right. Oh, dear Lord. Oh, She's a Bama no, fan. All the way. What? I, she oh, is an yeah. Alabama I'm fan. I'm sorry for you. That's I'm not sorry bad. for you. Oh, she's not because she has all of her little national championship banners hanging, <laughs> hanging in my LSU room. You know, though, <laughs> I think I, I got three. You, you know, know, the one thing she though is they'll never have the greatest team of all time, and that was the 1995 Nebraska Cornhuskers. No, <laughs> what, what? The greatest? The well? Wow. Sorry, I'm a really big Nebraska Cornhusker fan. Like, no. I won't, I won't, I won't really? disagree with oh, you there yeah. because Tommy Frazier was a beast, uh, right? Tommy Frazier Name was the man. Another football team who has scored 60 some points in a national championship game. Especially running like the 10. triple option without throwing the ball not throwing the ball at all don't encourage him can we talk don't about encourage- where i'm from yes where are you from <laughs> <laughs> kaplan 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 Google louisiana it. that's one of the cities i do not know Google it. It because- <laughs> so um do you know what crawley is no no do you ever drive i-10 where's I ashley <laughs> from i i hit baton rouge and go north okay but you have to get to baton rouge so you drive i-10 then i drive yes all right how about this South of Lafayette. Louis, mm. I'm trying to. I'm you know Googling where Lafayette, Lafayette is. Lafayette right? has the ca- Raging Cajuns, the, the Raging football team. Yes, Cajuns, that that's baseball right. team. Bad baseball is bigger than football over there. That's right. I used to play as the Raging Cajuns because they're like, they used to, like, when NCAA football was a thing. Greatest game of all time, by the right? way. Right. <laughs> yeah. They, they need to come back out with that. Anyways, I would play with the Raging Cajuns because they were always the worst team in, in the NCAA football. And so then you, like, play as them and make them the greatest team. Yes. <laughs> It's hard. So here we go. Uh, Kaplan, uh, I, I used a C, but thank you, Google, for autocorrecting <laughs> me. <laughs> it's, it's Kaplan with a K. And it says in 2000, the population was a little over 5,000. And then it has, I guess right now, four, 4,500-ish people. So you know what's my front yard when I lived in Kaplan? It, I'm guessing the ditch with the, crawf, with the crawfish in it. Crawfish pond. Crawfish pond. So oh, I was right. Awesome. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> that's cool. So yes. when did you, you start having crawfish? What's your first memories? Oh, Playing with it as a baby. So I remember when I was, I remember, yeah. Teething on it. <laughs> no, like not teething. Up. But like, I remember being like before kindergarten. So maybe four years old or so. I remember when my dad would boil crawfish, he would peel, he would break the pinchers off of mm-hmm. the crawfish and he would give me a little cup with some water and I would try to see how long I would keep them alive. Yeah. They were like my pet yeah. for the night because they would be dead by the morning. They would die. Kurt went through that the other day. Actually, I say the other day. It was about a year ago. He had crawfish for the first time because he's from Nebraska. That's why he's a big corn shucker fan. And then he came down here, and he had, I had crawfish. One so crawfish. They brought him. They a brought him a crawfish. live one, and he was like, "Oh my gosh, look at this!" I was like, Kurt, "That's literally what like like babies do here growing up. You know, they pick it and they play with it in my pincer finger, and they're like, oh. But that's what he was going through those experiences for the first time <laughs> as a thirty year old man. You know, I was just like, it was weird to see because he was just like giddy. <laughs> We were cutting some trash bags the other day to make, you know, like a um, plastic thing that we needed. And I was like, no, this is the way you cut the trash bags. And they were like, why that way? I don't know. That's the way my mom always did it when we bought crawfish. Yeah. She would line the tables all with plastic trash yes. bags. Yeah, that's just what you do. So there's a specific way that you have to cut the trash bags. <laughs> yeah. That's the way you do it for a crawfish boil. Yeah, if you can properly set up a crawfish boil, you can properly, pretty much properly set up anything in your home. Wow. Uh, especially if you're boiling a couple of hundred pounds or so, but <laughs> we're going to end up boiling 25,000 pounds of all you can eat crawfish. Hey, Tiny, you were sharing about it being different. You know, eight years old, you started boiling crawfish and you said, hey, they didn't have all the spices, but what did y'all use back then? And how is that different from now? Water, salt, pepper. My dad would take uh, cayenne pepper and crush it and he would put it in there, but they didn't boil the crawfish they had mm. about that much water at that's the, bottom. the way my daddy does his they steam it a and lot of people in louisiana it. steal still and they today would, yeah and they would take that salt and pepper and everything and put it on top they would take garlic and all that stuff dry it out and then they would make their own topping they would take it they and they would i, I promise you two three inches of water at the bottom of the pot fill it up with crawfish <coughs> fire it up it would steam the crawfish and when it was done they dumped it in the ice chest, sprinkled the stuff on top, 
toss it around. Put I don't some more know on about that and... sprinkle on top part. That's my, kind well, of against my religion too. My, da- my dad right. did it, uh, but uh, my daddy said, "Don't do that." No. <laughs> no, I said, Mr. Terry. <laughs> so, what's the difference in, in taste and flavor between steaming and, and boiling? Well, boiling's definitely much more flavorful. Okay, definitely. Yeah. Well, I mean, when, you, when you're limited on what you got, I mean, you kind of. But my dad steams his crawfish still. And Mr. Terry, I'm, like I don't know, how do you get the flavor from that? I don't know. There's only about that much water and that much crawfish, but. It works. Ask the Vietnamese. Maybe that's how they do it too. That's the, the way bag. I was. That's the way I was taught to boil the crawfish. The magic is in the bag. I didn't start. I, let's just be honest. I don't boil crawfish anymore since I've met Tiny. But <laughs> since I've met him, that's mostly boiling. Is let totally me tell different. you, we were dating. I, I guess two or three weeks. And he decided he was going to boil some crawfish in her backyard and, using her pot and burner and everything. <laughs> so I start filling the pot full of water. And as the water's coming up, she said, what do you think you are doing? <laughs> and I told her, I said, uh-uh, you want me to cook this crawfish or you want to cook this crawfish? She said, He sent me to you. the store and he said, this is the stuff that I need. And I said, well, you don't have any salt on here. And my daddy said, I need salt. He said, no you want to boil the crawfish or you want me to? I put zero salt in mine. None. No, not in the purge, not in the boil, nothing. It all comes in your Zatarans mm-hmm. or whatever you're going to use. A lot of that stuff has the right amount of sodium for what you're doing for 30 or 40 pounds at a time. I okay. told him he had one shot. Yeah. Was that like the test? Like, is this is he going to be the one? Are we going to get married? You had to taste the crawfish and be like, it passes? So that was, what, two or three weeks after we met? Yeah. And we were married 11 months later, so. Hmm. I guess so, huh? <laughs> yeah. He could boil crawfish. Yeah. I kept him. I can cook better in the house, too, <laughs> when I do it. You can do it, and you do crawfish inside oh, too. Oh, crawfish etouffee, all that stuff. Now she can cook the better stew. She she's a. I can cook a better stew, a better fricasse, a better sauce piquant. Oh yeah, a better all of that. He could do an etouffee. Let's give the man. He can do one a dish. Do you you guys know what a chicken fricasse is? No. Chicken brown gravy, thick gumbo. It's oh, oh, thick okay. gumbo with just chicken. You serve it over rice, not as a. In a bowl. I so, like the dark roux. Some people oh. don't. Oh no, that's, I love that's what dark I like, roux. It's almost like a gravy. Oh, 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 Definitely oh. dark roux. Yeah, that is that is the way to go. And when she does it, she cooks that. She she makes her roux, and then she cooks it down. She cooks the water out of it, and it's real. It's real thick, and and I don't. I can't explain it. I, I don't know how she does. Yeah. Well, it, I like that it has a it's name. Fabulous. Because some people are like, "Well, this is too. It's too thick. It's too dark." But if it, it's oh, it's almost like a different dish, then it makes sense. I've always just known like gumbo with the darker, you know, almost right. gravy. Like well, root. it's the gumbo has the the watery roux. Um, no matter how dark you make it, it, it still has that thin consistency. Mm-hmm. But he likes the thick roux flavor. Oh, yeah. So it's not necessarily the dark roux that you like. It's okay. just a thick roux flavor. So in a fricasse, you would really have that flavor. Yeah, Kurt. You weren't a big fan of the boiled crawfish. Is it because it was the work, the flavor, the spice, like just the experience? Like, what is it? There about was not it? enough cheese. Oh, or bacon, right? Or bacon. <laughs> you can put bacon in a crawfish bowl. Hey, what else can you put in there? Anything. I had Brussels sprouts the other day. Was it good? So my sister says that that's salad. <laughs> so when, <laughs> so whenever we, whenever we pour the crawfish on the table here in Texas, my sister asks what kind of dressing we're going to put on top because she calls it salad. Yeah. Where's I mean, the croutons? Use, yeah, you could use anything. Asparagus, Brussels sprouts, artichoke. But it artichoke. is actually very, very good. Now, That's what we've you, heard. If you find somebody that does an artichoke in the last boil, because the last boil is when you get your really good dirty water from all the spices, you put that artichoke heart down in the bottom of that while it's soaking. Oh, man. That sounds good. So, have you ever done like pork chops or chicken legs? No, I've never seen that. Do just the sausage legs too. Turkey legs, you put it in there? Yeah, when you don't want your crawfish, just put your turkey legs in there and boil them. He actually boiled some turkeys the last couple of years for Thanksgiving rather than frying them oh, wow. or baking them. Cajun and- boiled turkeys. Kurt, so what do you think about these other dishes? Is it the crawfish or is it just the boiled where you have to see the little the little guy and peel them? I mean, would you have it in like... I just didn't like it. I just didn't like it. But would you have it other ways? That I don't think so. You don't think so? Crawfish etouffee? I don't I, believe him. <laughs> if I got you some crawfish etouffee and I got you a good hookup on some crawfish etouffee with some good stuff, I need some. I need a need lot of butter. It. I need a lot of garlic. Well, etouffee I mean, is a butter it's sauce. It's butter. 
That's what an etouffee is. Kurt, just say yes and I'll eat it. <sighs> He's, yeah, he'll try yeah. it. <laughs> hey, hey, and you can have cheesy garlic bread with it. Okay. How's so old? I can even, like, make a cheese casserole on the side. But it's still fish. I'm not a big seafood okay, person. Okay, fish. fish is not fish. I realize, but it's still seafood. I'm not a no, big seafood guy. No, it's not seafood. No, it's seafood. It's cow. It comes out of freshwater ditch. Well, it's considered seafood. <laughs> we don't have not, it in- There's a difference between seafood and shellfish. Uh, okay. I guess. Mm. So it's a shellfish. Well, only if you're selling it because it has to be in a seafood market, I guess. Little lobster guy. He's delicious. So you don't like lobster either? No. Yeah. Why? Oh my! Oh my gosh! Have you ever eaten at a Red Lobster? My dad used to go to Le- Red Lobster all the time, and did I you hated go? it. And why? just not take you? Is did that you like oh the, the cheesy <laughs> biscuits alone? Did you before? like the biscuits at least? Yes. Mm. Cheesy biscuits, Red oh my Lobster. Oh gosh! Just, well, let big... me tell you what they do here. I mean, I'm pretty sure they do in Louisiana too. But have you ever had the cheesy biscuits from Red Lobster with so- breakfast sausage in it, mm. mixed up into mm. it, and they bake it like that? Have you ever had that? No. It's, that it's sounds a, that sounds good. They, so I think he needs to try seafood fondue. Oh, yeah, have you ever had that? I get that at, at uh, Papa's sounds, Seafood. Uh, Just let me fondue. tell you the best seafood fondue I've ever had in my life. Shark Shack. And I've had yeah, I've had it in New Orleans. I've had it everywhere. It's Shark Shack right there in Galveston on okay. the Strand. The best sea f- grilled, blackened seafood fondue I've ever had. You know something else that's very Cajun is like eating alligator. Mm. You we're gonna have, we're sauce gonna, be we're oh. gonna we're gonna have a display out at the throwdown. We're gonna get a few whole five foot alligators, and we're gonna put them on a rotisserie. Okay, I've seen videos of that where they're like smoking, smoking mm-hmm. some alligator, yep. and man, it looks good. They stick we something do it, in his mouth. We do it once a year for when Alabama and um... no, they know Alabama got nothing to do with this. <laughs> when LSU plays Florida, we we have a party at our house. It's called the Tiger Bait. Roll, yeah. So roll tide. I can't. I so can't, I can't can leave her out of every, Alabama. I can't leave her out of everything. So <laughs> we kind of have to add the roll in there. But we, uh, her dad drives down from Lake Charles with this awesome rotisserie trailer, and he brings the alligators, the rabbits, the frog, all the good stuff. And we, we just sit there and cook it all day long and watch football and eat and get fat. Yeah. Yes. So it's a, it's a family affair. It is because that's the only one day of the year she'll wear an LSU shirt. And they all, the last two years, they've ended up losing. Oh, wow. I'll keep wearing it. <laughs> so, yeah. I will never put on an Alabama t shirt. That ever. is a lie. Ever. Why, I, do, why do you like Alabama being from Louisiana? Uh, she's a bandwagoner. I am she not. I was never an LSU fan. She doesn't know what she wants because she's a woman. So she doesn't know who to pull for. <laughs> oh no! So your dad, your dad was a, a no. I no. A fan. Nobody in my family is really big on college. Yeah. Anything they like. So, the, they like the Saints. As an okay. a, as an adult, whenever I decided to make a decision on what college team I wanted, I chose Alabama. It made their blood boil and it kept things interesting around the house. That's and fun. So that's kind of no how it because started, the last three years really in my home. Is, Dude. Has been cry for me. Uh, it's not. It's not. It's not I don't even have fun. to win a national championship. I just have to beat LSU. And That's you're good what to go. we're talking about. We don't have to win another game. Just please beat Alabama. Good luck. And we can't do that. Hey, good. my my wife is on here. She's watching the stream. She said we can try Shark Shack. Um, me and me and her. It's our anniversary next month, and so we're gonna go stay in Galveston. Awesome. And man, that sounds like a good idea. I like the name. What else do they have there? Do they actually serve serve shark? They, oh, uh, I've never that's asked. That's a great question. That is a good question. Uh, I will say I do love shark tacos. Oh, never had shark it. tacos. There's a. Sam, Are you sure it's shark? Yeah, it's Sam's boat over there in uh, the Webster area. Yeah, I think uh, Web- but are you sure it's shark? They they call them shark tacos. I yeah, but I mean that could be may not be shark. It could be chicken. It could be. It could be. If they lied to me, I'm going to be upset. <laughs> <laughs> well, from we Nebraska. But uh, the Shark Shack, they, they have, if you like redfish, they have one of the best redfish fillets. I mean, they, they, they just, just, the this, food over there is just The food top is incredible. Notch. I will tell you that. Is there a place to get alligator locally? At my house. <laughs> yeah, she makes alli- she makes alligator. When we go to Louisiana, we, be, we, we make sure we stop by this, our little favorite place. If, and if you're driving... Home from I ten. This place called Billy's, and it's in Scott. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have they will sell you bags of alligator meat, and you just take it home frozen, 
and you just cook it. Do you do you like fried you alligator? Do. I've had I've had fried alligator before, and I'm trying to think. There was a place that's on near the Beltway and I-45. It's on the northwest corner. I don't know if it's still there. I used to live in Houston. Would drive Is it down Floyd. It may have been. It may have been. I don't know. I don't. I don't remember. But Floyd, I would. Drive. I think Floyd's has fried alligator. They may. But you're missing out if you've only had fried alligator. That's all I had, and I started craving it after watching the show Swamp People. Because it looks like so much fun. I, I would love to send Kurt on a boat to go try and, and hunt some gators, you know, but it looks like a great time. And then I was like, man, I want some some big old alligator. Like after watching, you know, it's like, I want to go eat some alligator. Yeah. It's, uh, do you and, like spicy? I do. Mm, you would like an alligator sauce picon. I would. I, that sounds delicious. I'll it's tell you kinda, what. It's kind of like a tomato gravy served it, over rice. If yeah. you guys want to come to the throwdown on Friday or Saturday, and come out and try. We are looking for celebrity judges. We are. Well, Kurt's a celebrity, and I can be the judge. I think See? that's a great. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think that's a great combination. Yeah. What um what we're gonna have is 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 in our VIP tent. We're gonna have something very special. Um, my friend Jay Garcia runs uh, Team Ohana, and Team Ohana, uh, they do eight oh eight. Um, it's Beach a. Cleanup. Yeah, the beat they they support the beach cleanup for all the beaches and stuff, and they're starting to they they did in Hawaii, so now they're gonna do Hawaii and here, um, so they're going to help us do a pineapple glazed bacon wrapped alligator. Oh man, that sounds awesome! So for a Cajun luau, yes, and we I want I'm personally inviting you guys to come out and eat. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of good food in that tent. Bo- uh, boil crabs. I tell you what. One of the things that separates us from most of the other crawfish um, festivals, shall we call them? Yeah. Um, you, you like Food Network? Yes. Okay. So Food Network did a an oyster trail one time and, and found this place in Abbeville, Louisiana, called Shucks, and they rated them one of the best charbroiled oysters. In the United States, hmm. they're going to be there. Oh, that's awesome. So I grew up eating shucks. So mm-hmm. whenever he said oysters, I was like, "There's no other place that you can go. You have to go to shucks." They actually shuck the oysters, kind of like this with the window. You can see them shucking the oysters and everything from the restaurant. Wow, they're going to be out there putting on a, a very good display, and they will serve those charbroiled oysters and oysters on a half we'll, shell. We'll have them for sale. Y'all like oysters? Love Y'all eat oysters. Oh, love them. Oh. Y'all, have y'all heard about the San Leon Oyster Festival? We have, and actually, um, next year we're gonna kind of we're gonna kind of stagger dates with them because they ended up on the same date as us. Yeah, and um, so we're gonna stagger dates, and we, we're gonna see if we can't support them, and they come support Definitely. us. So, yeah, we, we love uh, oysters local. too. Yeah, oysters are phenomenal. Now, if you've ever been to the French Market in New Orleans, and you go down there, they take them directly from the water into the and they pop them right there's something there totally the different water. about louisiana oysters versus texas the salt is just different yeah i don't know they're a lot saltier and the flavor is just so much better on a raw oyster there than it is here hey jennifer we got to get you in can you, can you scoot over because i want to they're talking their thing i just want to know like with the last name like yours like what? What are your your roots? Like, are, are well, you Cajun? I have some, yes, sir. Yeah. So my dad's family's Cajun. They're all from a little small town, not far from hers, Eunice, Louisiana, kind of in the same. Are y'all in uh, Le- Saint Landrew's Parish too? No, girl. No. We are vermilion oh, with south, one L. South. You're south. <laughs> vermilion you're with south one L. Yeah. Right. So south of I ten is the only yeah. place that you could be Cajun. Yeah, that's what she says. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so my family, I spent every summer there growing up. Um, we didn't eat a whole lot of crawfish. We did a lot of gumbos and the sauce piquant. That's probably my favorite. So I keep, they invited me to their house a few weeks ago, and I'm thinking I'm going to get some good food. Like, I even told Patrick when I was, I'm like, I'm going to Danielle's and Tiny's for a meeting. I said, I know she's going to cook something. <laughs> no, I got KFC. Oh, <laughs> no, it was Popeye's. Popeye's. Oh, it was Popeye's. Oh, see, it was Louisiana. Louisiana, it was Louisiana. Louisiana yeah. chicken, at least. Wanted, Love that she chicken. She post these things of her cooking. I'm like, did my invite? <laughs> you can't come to my house for a meeting and expect that I'm going to be cooking. You never yeah, know. You were cooking. You always cook. There's oh, always there's, something. We have freezer full of gumbo. Because when you cook this, when you cook that type of stuff, you can't cook it for three people. 
Yeah. There's ne- there's not a recipe out there in the entire world, a Cajun recipe that feeds three people. Gumbo for three no, people. At least like at Gumbo least for three days. Three, four days a week. I'm pretty sure my child's not Cajun anymore because he's so sick of eating gumbo. Oh no. Yeah, I because for our wedding when we when we got married, we we did jambalaya for the wedding. Her dad did. And we had enough jambalaya left for six months. And y'all had like 200 people there. I did all kinds of stuff with that jambalaya meat, though. Pastalaya. Yeah. My, yeah, there's, there's plenty of stuff you can do with Pork chops and a brown gravy. My wife, my wife just texted me, said that her, her grandmother, which they call Giggy, her family's from, is it Tickfla? Let me see. It, she said. Oh, that's the Tickfla. Yeah, that's right there on. Uh, Tickfla, Louisiana. Right yeah, that's right there on the, on the lake. The way they do the, um, the poker runs. The Tickfaw Poker Run. See, it sounds like a tiny town. I, I don't know. Like the, I'm pretty sure it don't exist. <laughs> most of oh, yeah, it does. Tiny. Yeah, it's got to be north of I-10. Tickfaw tick tick is a real a place. She's a snob. If, you're not, if you got to be south of I-10. <laughs> <laughs> to be real Cajun, huh? she got swamp in her blood. Hey, if you ever look at a map of a uh, uh, Cajun country, it's right in the middle of Louisiana, all the way to the south, and the rest of it's just... Other places. The rest of it is Alabama. West Mississippi, East Texas, Southern Arkansas, and then there's Cajun country. Like people say there they're from Shreveport. I'm like, that's Arkansas. <laughs> so whose family was out there hunting the gators? Is anybody doing the, the swamp people thing? My family no. Did. I didn't have anybody in my family doing that. I did go to, I rode the bus in kindergarten with a girl, Katie Broussard. She was on there for one or two seasons. She uh, hunted with Liz in Pecan Island. Mm-hmm. So I'm from Forked Island. That's where I went to school. Spell so it. there's F O R K E D. Forked Island. Where's Pecan the Island. <laughs> right. <laughs> what? Where's the T? Forked. 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 <laughs> Forked Island. Forked. There you go. Hey, what? it's called it Forked. Can you let us know uh, again if people are just joining us? That event, you know, when it is, how someone can, you know, do they need tickets? Find out information. Yes. Uh, uh, it's uh, April 26th and 27th out at 10 Cups Caddyshack. That's 9020 Stewart Road in Galveston, Texas. Uh, Friday night's going to be All You Can Eat Shrimp uh, with Wayne Toops. Um, and Saturday night, Saturday is going to be All You Can Eat Crawfish with uh, a big time all star cast of Cajun music. And um, you can get your tickets at BTR. CajunThrowdown.com. So, what time does it start on Saturday? What time is it going to be over? Saturday is going to start at 11 a.m. Uh, we are actually going to do a national anthem tribute at noon. We're going to have para the parachute guys mm-hmm. coming in from. Uh, I think a couple of them are National Guard Army guys, and they're going to be uh, jumping out of an airplane. With American flags and all that, and putting on a show in the sky wow. while the um, national anthem's being played. So, and then we have Curtis Poulard coming on the stage, Jamie Bajeron, Jason Cassidy, Alex Tuchet, Richard LaBeouf, and then it, gates close at eleven. Our last performer of the night um, starts at nine. Frank Foster. Tiny, have you ever jumped out of airplane? Nope. I feel like you may be. No, nope. I get big. scared to get on them. <laughs> I feel, like, I feel like you can't have an event right next to Skydive Galveston and, and not have that. And not have jumped out of a plane. I've jumped out of one. No. Look Why? at me. Look Dude, at me. He's look six foot me. six. You have to I be get, a certain what height. What size is that parachute, though? <laughs> are you talking? Are you calling me round, too? <laughs> no. no, I'm talking no, about for those, tiny. Uh, those straps can only hold so much. It's a weight thing. It, it is, is a weight thing. You it know, they've thing. only crashed it a couple of times. <laughs> That's what well, he told me. He's like, "Oh, I've only landed in the water." Do you know how big water. the hole in the ground is going to be when I hit it? Well, you land, you jump over the water, so that's one of the benefits. Yeah, you'll just land with the sharks on the and beach. Then you yeah, can eat it, you man. know. Yeah, just think There's about nothing it. Nothing wrong with landing in loose sand. <laughs> I mean, south, Southwest weighs me before I get on that plane. <laughs> do they really? That's no. not oh. a true story. <laughs> <laughs> but I do get aggravated. I do get aggravated though when I go on an airplane, and Whiz Kid over here forgets to book our seats early. So then I don't get that spot next to the emergency door so I can stretch my leg. So I'm like this. Yeah. I like WizKid as an insult, kind of. High speed, WizKid, uh, whatever they call it. <laughs> I've been called worse. <laughs> <laughs> Not today. You've been doing a good job. Um, I, I wanted to say something about their 
what else sets their festival apart from other ones in the area is that Danielle really wanted uh, to bring home here and make not just the festival. Most of the festivals in Louisiana have a pageant associated with them, and she brought that here. Mm -hmm. She just had her very first inaugural pageant on Sunday. It was a great success, lots of fun. I got to judge. She put on a class show, and those little Cajun queens all the way from the babies were Tiny Miss. Tiny Miss, Baby Miss, all the way up to Mrs. We have 10 Cajun throwdown queens that are going to be at the event. What ages? Represent from zero to oh, we don't want Mrs. To her She's a lady. She's uh, okay. She's 35. 35. She's Our Mrs. is 35. And there's 10 from from all from babies so, so 35. Yeah, years. there's zero to six months. There's seven to 23 months. There's two to three, four to six, seven to nine, 10 to 12, 13, 15, 16, 18, and then 18 and over not married and 18 and over married. And that's the Mrs. Cool. Mrs. Yeah. So, I mean, like we said, we wanted to make it family based and, uh, they, they have done a wonderful job. You know, I have a team of very professional people that are helping put this thing together. Shea Baggett. Um, Bear Wells. Bear Wells. Allison Soleri. Danny Higgins. Um, Danny Bell. Chris Freer. Yeah. All, I mean, they've just been amazing. Oh, and we got a Schumacher. Amy Hallmark. Amy Hallmark. I her call name her is Schumacher. not Schumacher. <laughs> because she has a, you know, the, the the soccer mom haircut? Yes. So I call her, she just looks like a Schumacher. And your brother, Stephen Gidry. <laughs> yeah, and my brother, Stephen Gidry. And, you know, when, when she brought up the pageant, I was like, man, I don't know. I don't know if it, it that would work here. Right. She did it, and it did. So is that like tradition so in Louisiana? In Lu type yeah, thing? in Louisiana it is tradition. I mean, some of the festivals here do it. Mm -hmm. um, it's not as advertised and it's not as much known. But I wanted to do something more of a more natural pageant. So, um, I mean, it's a Cajun throwdown festival. So it's not glitz and glamour. So we were we were looking for a little bit different for our pageant queens than your, your typical pageants. But yeah. Cool. How very, very typical to have that. That's awesome. And the pageant queens are going to do the escorting for Friday night for Louisiana Cuisine. On Saturday, we have a crawfish racing with the kids. <laughs> so we have a bullseye with our logo, the P-Rogue. Did you know that was a P-Rogue? I didn't know. Yep. A P-Rogue. So we had we have our logo in the middle, the P-Rogue. And do you know that crawfish crawl backwards, right? You know, I've only ever seen them in like big... Ice chests are like on my plate, you know. So, so they crawl backwards. That's why they they have crawfish cages. So when they crawl backwards, they're in the cage, and then their claws won't let them out. So oh, the holes are okay. like this. So once they're in the cage, that's how they catch them in the traps. So um, we're gonna have a crawfish racing contest at five o'clock on Saturday afternoon for the kids, and the queens are gonna help us host that. And the kids have water guns, so you shoot the crawfish in the face with a water gun. <laughs> Try and get them to go backwards. And you get them to crawl backwards, and the first one into the pea rogue will win. That's why, have That's you ever awesome. heard the phrase crawfishing? You're mm -hmm. crawfishing like out of it? this guy's crawfishing? Yeah. He's backing out. Oh, okay, okay. You're backing out. Well, I've, I've never heard it at that term. Yeah. Uh, That's if, cool. If, From if, now if, on, I'm going to be... Crawfishing wow, out? stop crawfishing. Right. That's yeah, you, how you that, use that. People are going to know <laughs> exactly what you're talking you about, that. too. That's my new favorite you know, catchphrase. You know what else we're going to have at this festival? And I saw you guys, uh, the Cool Cow Creamery. Mm -hmm. Dude, they're making our own flavor. Mm. What's it going to be called? I don't know we yet. I don't know yet. So we're going to try to stick with all, like, sort of, like, Louisiana flavors. Cool. We'll have yeah. Pralines and cream, which, you know, he makes his own pralines, New Orleans style. Did you know that it's pralines, not pralines? I didn't know. See, she knows. She <laughs> people flirt. in Texas say, pralines, give me some of them pralines. The the minute you said Cool Cow Creamery, I just like shivered a little bit. I still have like flashbacks. That place is amazing. Yeah, he's probably mad I didn't bring him any. I pulled in the parking lot and went, oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm having flashbacks, though, about Cool Cow Creamery because they shaved my eyebrows. Oh, yeah, we shaved his eyebrows because we donated $1,000. A, a we appreciate their, that. Their they came back. Thing. They're coming back. And they need some microblading. They probably look better. <laughs> <laughs> microblading. No, he had to. Sh he shaved. They shaved a bald spot. They didn't shave him bald. They shaved like a horseshoe bald <laughs> spot on him, and then shaved off his eyebrows. It looked it good on him. Six thousand dollars. <laughs> that was worth it. Yeah. Who who did it go to? 
KHEA radio. So to buy awesome. Some so, new equipment. So, so awesome. The first time Jennifer came in. I'll do cool. it next time with you. Okay. <laughs> He's bald. <laughs> yeah, so. Like I said. I mean, that's not his real hair. Your face I, I, and your brows. I like to look young on the weekends. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Well, it looks good on you. It does. It's, it's, it's Tuesday. <laughs> I needed to have that after the, the event. That I needed hat. to walk around with that and say, man, we should have thought of that. You should have because you can get any of your sport, favorite sports teams. Like, you could have got a Nebraska. You you it would have been a corn. It, it would have been, been Well, no, it, it would have been a red cap with a Nebraska in right here and white hair. I think you need to you get had, him a, perfect on you. You need to get him a corn husking competition. Or a he, corn ooh. food truck. You know, I was trying to describe like Nebraska to somebody the other day in Texas, and they're like, "Oh, it's just a little little piece of corn, right?" And I'm like, "No, you can't drive in country roads and like not like slowly go through the intersection because the corn is so high. The husk is, you know, so kind of the same with us and sugarcane. Hmm. Really? I've never yeah, seen sugar. If you ever drive through South Louisiana, that's that's all you see is sugarcane." But you can't you can't go through the intersection because it's blocked. Like everything, you can't see down the roads because there's the corn is so high. Oh wow! Oh no, ours you can't go. It's blocked because the tractors are in the way. There's no scary movies about sugar cane though, like there is about corn stalks. <laughs> That's true. Stephen King. <laughs> wow. Oh Stephen King. Damn. You know we're gonna we're also gonna have we're gonna have food trucks, man. From I got a, a guy in coming from Lafayette name is T Don's Trailer. He's coming with. You ever ate cracklings before? Oh, yes. I'm They're gonna have uh, beignets on a stick. We're gonna have. Is Cool Cow gonna have their ice cream? They truck? will. Okay. They will They're gonna have an ice cream. cream. They will. They will have their ice cream truck out there, and it's I'm gonna there. be amazing. I'm so there. I'm yeah, so I mean, so you guys, if you want to broadcast from there, we'll have all the equipment out, and I mean, if you guys want to come, we'll we'll have you know Wi-Fi and all that stuff for you. Nice. Maybe that Friday. We'll have to look and yeah. see what's going on. So Fridays from 4 p.m. to 11 p.m. Okay. Wayne Toops closing out the show. All you can eat boiled shrimp. Saturday is 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Frank Foster closing it out with all you can eat boiled crawfish. Wow. And a crawfish cook-off going on. So like the eating competition, then there's the cook-off. There's something for the kids. There's, there's literally something, something for, for everybody. Kids. We also have a tiny throwdown that's going to be happening for the kids also. What's you want to tell them about that? Some of the largest inflatables I think you've ever seen. We're going to have 14 of them, uh, ranging from 20 foot high to 30 foot wide. Um, and also right outside of that, we, we have a great sponsor, Tandem Trucking. Mm -hmm. And they're bringing, um, what do they call those? Uh, it's a touch, and tr a touch truck. Okay. So you know what a touch truck is, We've heard is, of, right? yeah, like touch truck like type thing. Are they being a, a really cool big truck? Right. It's, it's a huge earth mover, and the tires are probably bigger than the height. They're taller than this ceiling to wow. floor. Yeah. And they're also spreading out a huge sand area, and they're bringing out Tonka trucks. And they're letting the kids just go wild with Tonka trucks on this touch and play. That's fun. Yeah. So, I mean... The kids are going to have a great time. We're going to have tattoos for their faces, a, a paint We're putting person. tattoos on kids' faces. Yeah. Nice. Do you so, have a face painting? Yeah. We are going to have face painting. We have two face painters coming out. The Mike Tyson look. We have <laughs> no, temporary tattoos. Let's yeah. clarify that. They could go on their hand as well. They don't oh, have yeah. to go on their face. I'm just so, we do have stickers as well. And that's one thing. And eight and under are free to get in the event. Okay. So if you want to come out and you're worried about your, you know, God, I have this little kid or, you know, are they $20 or $30 or whatever at the gate? Yeah. You know, don't worry about that because if they're under, if they're eight and under, they're in free. There you go. So it's a good time. Sounds like a good time. Um, So what kind of different flavors are there going to be? Is it just going to be like, like spicy, mild? Is there going to be garlic? Is there? Well, it, it really depends on you know you get to go sample the teams okay and that, that's really up to them but we have a guy a caterer coming in from louisiana who does all of the golden nuggets um crawfish so he he does them by the masses but he's also rated one of the best mm -hmm. so it, it's really hard to get that you know serve the masses and get the flavor at the same time so he's coming in and he's gonna feed uh, the majority um of the masses because when you do you do quantity uh, like that, it, it's really hard. It, it's pressure to put on the, all those teams to cook all that crawfish themselves. Yeah. 
So we're bringing in him. If you're going to be the best, you bring in the best. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. He's coming from Jennings, Louisiana. Do you know where Jennings is? I do not. Oh, gosh. (laughs) You're just going to need to come with us on a road trip. How about Lake Charles? Yeah, I know where Lake Charles is. How about Lafayette? Sure. Okay. (laughs) So Lake Charles and Baton Rouge, you're good. Yes. Everything we've talked about is between Lake Charles and Baton Rouge. Okay, yeah, I know. On I-10. There you go. Yeah, oh, yeah, I've been up and down I-10 a lot. And south. So now when you go through Crawley, C-R-O-W-L-E-Y, okay. you're going to see the sign exit here for Kaplan. And you're going to be like, Kaplan, Louisiana does exist. We'll see about that. Maybe it doesn't. There's only 5,000 people there. There's more crawfish and than people. And they all talk the same. <laughs> there are, oh, there are, <laughs> there's more crawfish farmers than people. Yeah, it's uh, crawfish is turning into a big business. Now that, you know, when I was a kid, you could get crawfish, man. 50 cents a pound. If that. I mean, 39 cooked. cents. Cooked. Wow. Cooked. I mean, it wasn't. And then once, uh, you know, once it, once once the, um, once it just started spreading like wildfire, I guess it was I've, over the last decade, at least, I've seen crawfish prices, man, stay at two, three dollars a pound. Wow. That's good. Supply and yeah. demand. Yeah. Hey, we're about out of time. Can y'all share one more time, you know, the event? How somebody can get tickets and then why they should come. Absolutely. Um, it's uh, btrcajunthrowdown.com is where you can get your tickets. Uh, the event's happening April 26th and 27th on beautiful Galveston Island, uh, 9020 Stewart Road uh, in Galveston. Um, you know, if you want to come out to a family atmosphere where you, you get the Cajun, you know, you Zydeco. The Zydeco, the food, just the Cajun atmosphere. Everybody's going to be laid back. If you want to come and just have a, a true good time with the family, this is it. Bring your lawn chairs. Every every spring, we want everybody to just say, you know what? It's time to get the family back together. It's throwdown time. So, and that's that's our goal is for everybody, but just family. I know? love it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate you guys. Thank you. Dave, we appreciate you, man. Before we go, hey, we have uh, we're gonna announce these winners. So we got three winners. I um, mean, I'm not sure which one, which one, which, but we got uh, some Axe Masters passes giveaway, and then we also have uh, the Leak City Music Festival and Barbecue Festival giveaway. Yeah, those are the Axe Masters. Those are the three winners for the Axe Masters, and I have I'm gonna the, announce these. The winner of the Leak City Music Festival. All right. So congratulations, Robert Villarreal. Congratulations to Amanda Zamora and congratulations to Casey Offenberg. Y'all are going to be going to throw some axes over there in Leak City at the Axe Masters Texas location off Hobbs Road in Leak City. If you haven't had an opportunity to check them out, go check them out because you can go throw some axes. How cool is that? So congratulations, guys. How about you want to come for free crawfish. Say that again. Anybody want to come for eat free crawfish? Oh, I'm sure everybody. You guys want to give away some weekend passes? Oh, yeah, we'd we- love to. Let's let's talk yes. about do that. Do we have some right here? We can do that uh, on tomorrow's show. Yeah, whenever you want. Boom. Oh, awesome. Love that'd it. be great. So we're going to be giving away some passes to go eat some crawfish, too. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. And then the winner of the League City Music Festival passes, we got tons of these, but we're going to announce one of those now, is Paula Osborne. Congratulations. You have won that as well. Yeah, you'll be able to pick uh, which which day you want. So, hey, this has been Kickstart. Y'all be blessed. Thank you so much again yes. for joining us, guys. Have a blessed day. It's beautiful outside. We're going to be giving away some tickets, and, and thank you all again. So we're excited to be able to do that. This is KHEA Radio, 99.5 FM. We lo- all right. Bye, guys. We love you. We hope you that you have, have a fantastic, fantastic day. We'll see you guys tomorrow morning.